What is happening, good people? Jeff C here. It is uh, it's Sunday, July the 14th. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying your summer. Um, hope you're having nice, nice, nice. I hope it's nice weather. I sound like Mike Tyson. Um, I'm going to see if I'm coming in here. Hopefully, I will be. Um, is this working now? I hear you. Second here. Hello. Hello. Hangout is live. It says it's live. There's Kamel. Hi, Kamel. Hello. Can you hear me? I hear you. Can you hear me? People are going to laugh at this in a second. You're all going to laugh. You're all going to laugh at me. I uh, didn't have my uh, speakers on. <laughs> Can't hear anything. Laugh. You're all going to laugh at me. All right. I uh, didn't have my uh, There we go. There we go. That's why I couldn't hear it. <laughs> I wondered why. I wondered why. It's like, why isn't the sound working? All right. Hey, Kimmel, how are you doing? I'm doing well. That sounded extra crazy on my side because I had my sound going and it was coming through my headphones just like this big loop. Sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Well, we're off and running. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. And I hope you're, I really sincerely hope everyone is enjoying their summer. Because as crazy as things are out there, um, make sure you stop and smell the roses and, and try to enjoy every day that you have sort of thing um because you never know how many more you got left sort of thing and uh yeah the world is pretty crazy so we're going to talk about uh food tonight that's why i brought on camille uh who really is uh, deep into examining and and um, researching all the different types of, of synthetic genetically modified lab grown meats and everything else that uh the nwo is sending our way and it's already happening. Um, I mean, it's been happening for years up here in Kanakistan. I think they announced in 2015 that, uh, hey, guess what? GMO uh, salmon is already on the market. It's already in your grocers. Uh, you don't need to know, though. We're not going to tell you. And, you know, we're not going to put any labels on it. Get the hell out of here. Um, and I've seen just at my local grocer um, these impossible burgers these um uh, beyond synthetic, burgers beyond burgers <laughs> the trans meat remember beyond it's trans, trans meat. And, yeah yeah they, they love trans everything is is trans these days um and and this is uh i mean it, it, it's hard to get more important than food because you are what you eat um so and you see the effect now, so much of what I've been covering, especially recently, obviously, has been the pride and all that programming. Um, but a lot of what's happening to the kids is that they're eating these synthetic processed foods and it is wreaking havoc on their development, uh, their sexual development, their intellectual development, um, all different things. And this is all part, in my theory, of a, of a massive plan. Um, so... Yeah, let's get into the foods then, Camille, because um, you put up a, I don't know if you put up a video since, but you put up an excellent video uh, about a week ago. I think it was a week, maybe 10 days ago. Something oh. like that. Yeah, and and uh, it was all on these um, these corporations and these laboratories that are <laughs> doing these crazy things. I did a bunch of uh, research into it. I was um, looking up a lot of stuff. So I've got a lot of articles here. And I imagine you've got a lot of stuff to share. Uh, so uh, what do you say we just jump right into it? Okay. What do you want to talk about first? <laughs> which, oh, part? Well, which part? Yeah. Which part? What should we start with? Because it's, it's all pretty spooky. Um, why don't you... Uh, you know, suggest what we start with here? Well, the basic thing that that I'm looking at is how they're taking the tiny little life, these yeast and E. coli and algae, and they scramble them up and rearrange their genetics, which they say that we all, all the life on the planet has pretty similar uh, sort of code of life. And so maybe that's how they're able to rearrange them into just about anything. And they shock them back into action and they turn them into slaves and they, they create for the rest of their existence, they create these products so that people can not torture animals. No, wait, sorry, this, 
these are small little life forms. They say that yeast is alive and bacteria is alive, you mm. know, but so for the, the moral argument is lost on me for the, the people, and I'm not picking on vegans, but the vegans that I've talked to that are putting the moral argument forward, I find a problem well, with that, uh, but maybe they don't know. Plants are alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Plants are alive. <laughs> you think they and... want to be eaten? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Monsters. So. Yeah. <laughs> Monsters. Um, no. And, and look, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, again, I have full respect for people that choose to be vegetarian or vegan. Sure. But, you know, if that's what you feel, um, it makes sense for some people. I've tried, um, you know, uh, going on vegan diets. And, you know, it, do it doesn't really bother me not to eat meat. I'm not like, I mean, I love meat. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, but it doesn't, it's it's not like, you know, it, it can be a little bit difficult. Even in a big city like I am, can be a little bit difficult when you go around um, trying to find vegetarian restaurants. or rest I mean, like Montreal has a bunch of them, but still, I mean, they're few and far between. And then every restaurant that you do go to there'll be a, a sort of vegan uh typically there'll be a, a vegan selection or a, a meal that you can order or something like that um but what i would suggest about this and i don't want to inflame uh vegans and vegetarians that might be listening is i would suggest that a lot of this comes from the agenda 21 agenda 2030 the sustainable development and their programming of them, yeah of the masses and I, I would suspect a, a lot of the propaganda, uh, including some of these really, uh, you know, fishy sort of groups like PETA, um, are from these, uh, you know, germinate from these global sort of uh, organizations, and that their purpose is to create a sentiment amongst the general public that we have to stop eating animals or we, you know, maybe not stop eating meat because they're going to change what meat is. But I, I would suspect that a lot of the propaganda that is pushed out there. Now, this is not to, you know, uh, you know, belittle what the big industrial farms do, the pig farms, the chicken farms. I think most of us know this. I, I've shown it many times over the years what you know um where your eggs come from generally it's not a good place and and that's the reality is that the status quo which is constantly changing but like we'll just say big industrial uh, agriculture is anything but perfect and i think camille you'd probably agree with me on that right yeah and not just the intensive animal agriculture because the monoculture farming is also just destroying the life in the soil. I wish I had, I wish I had it ready. I have in Isaac Asimov's book of facts, he quotes like how much life is in one square, whatever of farm soil that I doubt it's anything like that these days. Which Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they talked about um, over the years about um, in particular pig farms and the runoff, the, the fe fecal matter that gets into. Um, They're going to generate power with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, exactly. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um and, and so like but let's let's be honest. I mean I think most of us that that are probably listening to the show and and would would be having this type of discussion would probably ideally think homesteading and having your own growing your own food, having, you know, your own domesticated animals uh would ultimately be um, the best solution for most of us, if we were able to do it, because if, if we look and, and again, this is not necessarily about solutions, but if, if we look at what we're facing, where we have these mega corporations, these giant food corporations that have so much control and it, much like your television and, and your, your, you know, whether it be your magazines or your internet channels or even your youtube celebrities you don't really know who these people ultimately work for um or what these you know the, the affiliates are attached to um at their head sort of thing um so you know it's it's quite something what we're facing today um and of course one of the major objectives is 
for the the NWO is not to have <laughs> gazillions, millions of people do growing their own food and having their own, you know, um, farms and stuff like that. That's the opposite of what they Being want. They sustainable. Want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the irony too, because that is true sustainable. That is like yeah. true be, being off the grid and and you know somehow s sustaining yourself, your family is really ultimately the most sustainable thing that, that any human being could do. Uh, I living. think when they're using that word, I think they're talking about their businesses. Like, yeah, yeah. They're going to sustain, yeah. Well, yeah, that's it, right? I mean, I, I think a lot of it is 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 just a takeover. I mean, it's it's just a, a way of saying, well, look, I mean, they, they got to convince us that the world is dying and we're causing all this harm and it's out of control and therefore we need to come in and fix everything. So, yeah, because these foods, like you were saying with the Agenda 21 thing, these foods are are the perfect fix for that because this is vertical farming and this is bioreactors local, locally produced food. And then there's even groups working on countertop production for your own, you grow your own meat at home. Yeah. What could be wow. better? Wow. Grow your own meat. You know, and, and that's where I would say with this, okay, so if people want to know my sentiments on on how ideally i don't practice this yet i can't quite make it happen at this point in time but ideally um i'd like to be able to uh, produce my own meat you know like make you know have my own livestock have my own you know animals that i treat very humanely and give them a quick clean painless death give them a yeah, nice one life bad day. <laughs> well you know Great not life, even really right I mean, well yeah a quick one. <laughs> it's quick. A, you don't even know what one. happens, right? Yeah. Like I've, I've seen this on, on YouTube and other places, you know, where people are homesteading and they have chickens and stuff. And they'll show you how to kill a chicken without stressing it or, or causing yeah. it any pain. And I totally dig that because it's like then you appreciate, you know, you know, all the effort that went in to produce the food, the meal, right? I think that's a big thing, appreciating your food yeah. and where it came from. People just are shoveling it in and it's got to be fast. You got to squeeze it in. Yeah. Because there's yeah. so much to do. We're all so busy. Well, the, the American sort of culture, if you will, I mean, a lot of people have that stereotypical sort of view of Americans that, you know, more is better. And, you know, you just have a huge big plate of food. You don't really have any idea of where it came from. You just want as much as possible. And, you know, um, and that um, obviously is you know, the antithesis of, of what you would call sustainability. So you can see that, yes, there are faults in the current sort of way that a lot of us live. I agree. I mean, you just look around obesity, for instance, is it's crazy. It's crazy. I watch a lot of music uh, festivals and I watch movies from the sixties and seventies. Um, so I'm like really into uh, older culture, even like fifties and forties. You never see any fat people almost in anything when you go back prior to the like the the 90s and nowadays it is out of this world how how many obese people now mo most that not really because of the meats are really more of the sugars and the, the all the uh sweeteners that they put in and everything uh the the you know um, uh, the beverages the coca-colas and stuff like that right that are, it's are, everything yeah i think yeah all together yeah. but yeah the sugar is horrible it is crazy oh yeah yeah and, and but they're changing that <laughs> yeah yeah we, we, i would like to do a whole um, show in the future um camille on sugar because I, I think that would be that would be a huge thing in itself because i think that's where most of our cancers are are coming from um and most of what this obesity uh that is just everywhere is coming from and being normalized of course at the same time but yeah we're going to talk more about the we're going to talk more about the meats here well it's um, not just meat let me tell you it's even whiskey <laughs> it's even, yeah it's everything yeah like yeah, there's yeah, this it's... one company glyph glyph mm -hmm. they're so g-l-y-p-h that they're they are touting the fact that they are a molecular whiskey they don't do distillation they don't do any of that they just wow. do plant-based and yeast sourced yeah they brew up the bits and pieces but it, i mean and that'll probably be fancy i mean i wonder if people will be like oh i'm gonna get that well it, you know it, it, have you seen the movie soil and green i haven't i know it's but it's I wanted to. I haven't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like it's some classic, people, you know, must right? see. But it, Isn't it, it, it is a classic. Yeah. It, 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 but it okay. So, sorry, the green um, takes place. 
Um, it might be around this time because it's this movie from the 70s and Charlton Heston's in it. That would be and, perfect. Yeah, so I don't know if it's 2020. It's a huge Agenda 2030 type, or Agenda 21 type movie. It really is. And uh, people are starving, and the elites are the only ones that have access to, you know, real foods and stuff like that. Everyone else is subsisting off this this stuff called Soylent Green. There's another movie that came out not that long ago, maybe five, six years ago, called Snowpiercer. And that takes place in a, in a global warm, warming thing you know, dystopic future. And it's a similar type theme where all the peasants, everybody's living on this massive train and all the peasants are, are eating these, these gelatin bars that are actually just insects that are, are boiled down. And, um, the elites of course are the ones that have the access to the real foods. And I think in many ways, that's kind of the way it is, right? It's like, you wonder, like I wonder about celebrities. I know a lot of them are just useful idiots, but I wonder if they're actually drinking those. Like you know, you see American Idol or something like that. Are they actually drinking the cokes? Are they actually drinking that stuff? Or do or do they have insight to know? <laughs> is it all? Well, what I would suggest, of course, beyond being product placement, is that it's all about conditioning people into eating these horrible foods. Like, and I would say that on YouTube, um, that's a whole industry. Like, there's a whole industry of of all the popular YouTubers who are all connected that are pushing all the most toxic foods on people. All the sugar, 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 connecting it to all the mind control culture, the Marvel and the Disney and Star Wars and everything else and you know getting people addicted to having sweets and and uh, you know junk food basically fast food all these things and then of course you know uh, the trends that they push on people like the uh, order what the person ahead of you ordered or something like that like they, all the YouTube celebrities do this on, on a regular basis and I showed or I talked about it recently how up here in Rainbow Unicorn Land our biggest grocer is called Loblaw and they had a they had a commercial that i saw during the uh toronto raptors basketball this is the first time i watched tv in like years and uh boy i was just so disturbed i was so disturbed every commercial break i was like oh my god it's so bad um but yeah they had a loblaws commercial that was basically pushing the exact same ideology on on the consumers it was saying when next time you you go to a restaurant, order what the person next to you order. <laughs> try something that try everything on the menu. <laughs> do this, do that. I, I saw something that reminded me of that. There was an article on that livekindly.com. They're a vegan. Well, I don't know if they're just vegan, but plant based sort of thing. But they say that Burger King in Sweden is doing a. They have two different vegan burgers, a chicken one and a Whopper, and that they are offering people the opportunity to order from this 50 50 menu and there's a 50 50 chance you'll get the real thing or one of these oh. plant-based ones and then you can scan a wow. code and see which one you got wow yeah well then, then it all ties together i mean yeah. it makes That's perfect sense Sweden so far but so, still so. The, the reason why I bring this up is exactly for that reason, because that's what my suspicion is. My suspicion is that um, they are promoting this ideology that try everything, you know, try everything. Hey, just like the, you know, the bowls of ice cream with Bill Nye, the science guy. Right? Why, why don't you try all the other flavors? <laughs> Vanilla, you're so boring. <laughs> oh. Come on, come on, get in here with the bowl with everyone else. Speaking of uh, ice cream, I see that the the perfect day foods people have their ice cream. It's sold out on their little uh, online ordering that they have, but they advertise as a it's a DNA equivalent. They're they're the ones. I think that's actually the company that started this whole thing for me was Perfect Day Foods, seeing that they were working on making cowless milk. But ooh. I'm looking at their ingredients list right here, mm -hmm. and other than so it's water, sugar, coconut oil, sunflower oil, and then you get, to, there's more, but it gets to non-animal whey protein. It does say contains milk protein, but nothing looking at, I mean, there's more on the ingredients list. There's nothing though that would make you think this is biotech. This is, I don't know. I haven't seen the containers in the store or anything yet, but it's, it's just so funny because people might not even notice, Ooh, non-animal whey protein. I'm all about it. You know, they might, think that that's yeah they, they, they don't understand the process because if, if you're buying milk you know it's not all that complicated to process right it had to come from a cow basically you would think, right yeah. <laughs> you would think. and they say it tastes 
completely just like regular ice cream. Yeah, there you go. And that's how, so like what, what is happening folks is, is that, and this is YouTube's playing a huge role with JikiTube playing a huge role in pushing this ideology. I see all the popular shills on YouTube uh, promoting this, like first like going and, you know, trying ordering whatever anybody else ordered on the menu, um, ordering what the person in front of you ordered, you know, trying everything on the menu. Actually, let's just show this. I got to show this because it, it is important um, here. I'm going to share my screen. I, I'm sure if, if you've got some stuff you want to uh, share, let me know right away, uh, Camille, because I'll, I'll definitely uh, put it up there. At least um, I'll, I'll send it to you in the other chat. Okay, yeah, you can send it on me on the side here. Okay. So we're going to just take a look here. I got a ton of stuff here open, so I'll just open this up and present it to everyone here. Um, before I take a look at what I got up here, um, I'm going to open up another YouTube tab, and I'm going to put in um, try what <laughs> or uh, ordering, ordering. Yeah, what the you see how it comes up, okay? So I want people to notice that. O R organic meat. <laughs> Can you see this, Camille? It's kind of behind for me here, but I see order. Oh, no, I see O. It's, okay, hang on. Um, maybe it's because you're looking at it. Um, are you looking at it from the the hangout window or? I tried. I was in the YouTube window. And yeah, you got to go to the because that's about fi okay. uh, fifteen seconds behind. So if you look in the just I see O R. Yeah, organic. So I put meat. up O R and I get organic me, organic chemistry lab. <sighs> okay. And then order and see, put the D and what do you get? Yeah. Order weird. 60. <laughs> 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 Ordering what the person in front of me ordered, which is basically order order six and another order sixty-six. Oh, um my. yeah. So just to show this to folks, this is what we're talking about. Um, where it's not just you know, it's it's obviously coming from another source. I mean, it's it's obviously a globalist sort of agenda that they're pushing, but they're using all the YouTube celebrities to push this ideology, uh, to push this. So people, you know, people practice monkey see, monkey do sort of thing. So you got all these top uh, YouTube celebrities getting millions and millions yeah, of views. Look at all those views. Oh my and, word! Like, nobody should be eating any of this food, right? Like there is no way. I mean, first of all. I mean, I wouldn't say mukbanging should be illegal, but uh, they would, should never be promoted. I mean, you should never, I mean, unless you're making, like, I would think that if if you had a channel and you made really good foods, um, that would be a, an awesome channel. Like, a re if you made wholesome, non-genetically modified, non, you know, <laughs> non-lab-grown uh, uh, meat type <laughs> food, and you showed people how to do it, and you, you know, uh, that would be fine. But that's not what we have on YouTube. I mean, you have that. It's just it's buried beneath all this crap and this is what they want the average person to do so um you just see how these are all one month one month two month one month one month so it's just a, a the past couple months that they've been doing this I, i've done a i don't know if i've done a video but i definitely talked about this we talked about this on yeah, yeah we talked so we talked about it on one of the past shows right yeah and you see all the biggest ones like jeffree star so they're mixing all these things together they're mixing the the well the fast food and the, the and then of course the the impossible burgers are all coming in with this because all the the youtube celebrities are going to be are already pushing this stuff um but you just see how it works so this is all setting the table so that you'll just try anything right just like the sexuality where they want you to try everything they want the children to try everything they're normalizing the consumption of any types of foods they want you to be prepped for what they've got coming this is what it's all about i think it's funny opinion. how they have them getting it at the fast food restaurants so already cooked because i've heard several times now in videos and one person in person that when you go to cook like the beyond burgers that they smell like cat food <laughs> <laughs> but must not be once it comes in the bag with the fries it's interesting that that movie um district nine do you know that film no, but I think you mentioned that, but I don't, I never it's saw it. It's a Agenda 21 film. Um, it's Neil Bloomkamp. He's, he's South African or something. And it, it's one of these films that came out 
maybe a decade ago in which it was setting the table for the massive immigration and promoting, you know, people to sympathize with immigrants. And, you know, and so we are, we're fully there now where every day you're being assaulted by your television, telling you how horrible it is for these people that are illegally smuggling themselves into your country (laughs) and how you should be, you know, irate and mad at your orange ogre uh, sort of thing. Um, So, but it's just another example, but in the film, uh, the aliens go, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but it, it, picture that instead of migrants uh, from another country, it's migrants from another planet and their, their <laughs> ship, their ship just gets stalled on earth and it can't go anywhere and they don't have enough fuel. So they all, they set up a refugee camp over Cape town or near Cape town in, in South Africa. I may have seen part of this movie. It's yeah. It was a pretty familiar. It's a yeah. highly acclaimed film. That's, you know how it works. Right. And yeah. you've got to see this one. <laughs> Um, so, uh, it was interesting because the refugees ate cat food or the aliens. That's what they ate. Poor things. Yeah. Poor things. But, um, maybe there's something there to it. Yeah. Right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what we're, we're being set up for, right? Is, is, uh, you're going to eat the cat food. Um, well, you know, all the people gonna... I saw in the videos that said it smelled like cat food, they ate it still. I just, the person I mm. know in person threw them out. So. I'd, I'd be I afraid to was. smell it because you, when you smell it, you're actually ingesting it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Okay, yeah. so let's, so we got that down. It's very important to, to I'm glad that we, we started off with that because it's important to understand how they're pushing the herd so that we understand that this is, so you can, you good folks that are listening to this, you can protect yourself and your family and you can understand, you know, this is what they're doing to us. They want us to do this, right? They want us to, to embrace the foods that they're making. So, and this is changing everything. Look at the effects that genetically modified uh, foods has had on an entire generation. Um, you know, you'd have to say most of the pride generation, <laughs> you know, hasn't turned out so well thus far. Um, And it's not their fault. Like, you know, it's not their fault at all. Um, But the fact that there's so many people that are suffering from this confusion, it's not just mind control. It's not just the programming of the television. It's what they're eating. Yeah. And and people, people need to push back against this because it's not just the food, it's the medications, like the pharmaceuticals. They say that 75% of the ones in the pipeline are synthetic biology. Mm. I mean, and they've already been giving people like the insulin and that's, you know, how the, the safety testing and everything, I wonder if that's sort of in a way why they started the aspartame brewing and the the insulin brewing and the rennet for the cheese because they say that most cheese out there that's why none of the states could pass the those non-gmo laws or the labeling laws they said because they'd have to mark cheese because it's almost all but that maybe they were just seeing like but it's so bad we're all everybody's so sick right well and also it hasn't gone well also the major uh food corporations all bandied together and ponied up hundreds of millions of dollars um to campaign against any state that was was trying to do that so it's 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 yeah it's many different things but without a doubt they're messing with our food which means they're messing with us can i do a side note before we go on with the food since we're talking about companies and governments and all of that i don't know if anybody here has ever looked into uh there's a guy named clint richardson and he does the comprehensive annual financial reports this huge review the way that they are well he doesn't do those all the corporations do the governments and the the big companies they all have to file these reports every year and he did this wonderful documentary super long but my goodness if you can watch other stuff you can totally watch this and, mm. and people should because it affects everybody in the world to see how all of these big companies are owned collectively by the governments and the people the pension funds and all this so they all have collectively the voting power to control all of these companies and then these little companies that and this isn't what clint showed and i did a really poor job there explaining it i'm going to put the link in the chat in just a second because people Mm. need to go look at that that video but 
it's not just the big companies because then they also changed the the laws back when the Silicon Valley and everything and a lot of this food's coming out of Silicon Valley in California and, yes. and Israel. It's where it's coming from mm-hmm. for the majority. But that they changed the laws after they were lobbied by these high tech companies that wanted to build up so that the pension funds could invest in venture capital too. And Ooh. so that's what's funded so many of these new companies. So you're all paying for all of this. You're paying for it and your governments own it and your pension funds own it all. And if people, I mean, gosh, people on mass should be going, what the hell? That is just insane that you're, you're paying for this disgusting takeover where, I mean, it's, it goes so far. It's just so big. That's so diabolical too. Yeah. to, to, to take people's pensions and use that to fund this this stuff it's just out of this world but it, it you gotta watch roll. that video <laughs> okay so it's clint richardson yeah I'm what's the video richardson. called okay so go to the cor- corporation nation is him on on youtube the corporation nation and okay, his okay. vaccine documentary is killer too that's i mean all his work is great and i wish corporation he would do more nation. <laughs> yeah and it doesn't turn up in the search so there you go that all guy. right so. Yeah, I got him. I, and I got right it. at the bottom of your screen, you see the Great Pension Fund hoax. Yes, it is four hours long, and it is not entertainment. And it is must see. Honestly, mm, people, gotta see you it. You will be fuming. <laughs> wow, it's amazing. It goes to show you that YouTube buries him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just so typical. All right, so thanks so much for putting that in. Um, so just looking up on YouTube here, lab grown meat. I want to just let folks know how it's being presented um they they it's they black mirror us all the time so there's a little bit of spooky but it's just it w- wears off quickly it's like oh it's all cool it's all at the same time as hitting you with all the PETA sort of animal cruelty videos and the seals you know and and whatever else you know <laughs> whatever thing people are freaking out about um, they're hitting you at the same time with the New Yorker, the New York Times, you know, CNN, all these outlets wired, all Disney media basically telling you, you know what, this is pretty cool. This is, this could be the way this is it, you know, what's this is the, the difference? way to escape the dog farms where they're killing dogs. That's what's yeah. populating my news feed. Is these oh, the dog, is that the, the Chinese dog farms? Yeah. Something along those lines. It's, yeah. 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 Wow. Which, you know, uh, better get growing that meat. That's it. And dogs countertop. are always used because, you know, uh, they're your best friend. Well, yeah, that's it. That's right. It. Because like everyone has them. You've been programmed into having dogs. Not that this is not a conspiracy dealing with dogs, but there is actually a dog conspiracy that you could say uh, dog and cat conspiracy that uh, the New World Order has been pushing dogs and cats on people for decades. Yes. And who's to say that they didn't? inbreed the bejesus out of them all these different breeds that oh yeah they did that they could see what's how to fix that issue because we know there's an issue there they're all they're all um all the dogs now are dying um it seems like uh like when i was a kid dogs died of old age (laughs) (laughs) now they all die of cancer and they all seem to live much less you know like you know you're lucky to get 10 years out of a dog which is is pretty sad um, and I don't so, know if it's only my news feed, but it's like pet food recalls left and right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're all polluted, but that's okay because the stem cell pet food is coming. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so let's just look at some of what's on YouTube here to start with. Tasting the world's first test tube steak, mm. Wall Street Journal. Inside the quest to make lab-grown meat wired. It's the same, right? It's- <laughs> wired stuff is usually crazy detailed, though. Not their art. I don't know about their videos, but their articles. Oh here you got God. a smiling girl here, a smiling lady. I tasted lab grown chicken nuggets. Beta test. CNET. I wonder, right? The Times and the Sunday Times. Is lab grown meat the future? Now, these are all recent, too, as you see. Well, there's one here from a year ago, but most of these are from a few months ago. Um, Lab grown meat is coming to your supermarket. Ranchers are fighting back. And then again, the ranchers will be depicted as they have been, like the homesteaders, like the homeschoolers, like anybody that bucks the system. Um, you know, you could say the Bundy Ranch and other examples of of you know bad sort of you know ranchers, maybe in movies and stuff like that as well. Uh the lab Cattlemen's here- association. 
see a lot sorry, of sorry the cattlemen's association i saw a lot yeah. of articles with them yeah but they yeah. they were happy to have the biotech when it was suiting them so mm. for the and clothes. that's it it's just yeah. the the problem is that we just have so many people that don't understand where it's all coming from they probably they, get like one of those golden parachutes though this big because it's the same companies right that are buying this garbage meat the big food manufacturers are buying not that all of these ranchers are making garbage meat but any of these big the big farms it's the same companies that are switching over to the plant-based and the lab-grown stuff they're not gonna well maybe they'll drop them all on their rear so i don't know sorry continue <laughs> yeah. so uh yeah we got uh well you aforementioned lab grown meat is silicon valley's next big it's silicon valley oh the these uh incubators the the indie bio and rebel bio all these things yeah how much of of <laughs> how much uh, control does silicon valley have over humanity right now <laughs> or at least the united states is pretty scary because all your internet corporations all your um uh, your major tech and your computers and all that's coming from there. Now your food is coming from there too, which is a pretty scary thought. Of and course, your doctors will be coming from there, right? The telemedicine, they're switching everything. Yeah. Uh, is lab, look at this. <laughs> Voa News is lab grown meat the next big thing? That's mm -hmm. one day ago. Here is butt feed, of course. Would you eat lab grown meat? Again, it's, it's, this is the way that they ease you into it. And it just like Camille said, where Burger Thing is is having this, you know, 50-50 menu <laughs> where you don't know if you're going to have a real meat or a fake meat thing, which is diabolical. It should be illegal. It's crazy. You know, how, how what? But then again, 100% all beef, right? That was McDonald's and that big lawsuit that they had way back when, which is it's total crap, of course, not 100% beef. There's so many chemicals and other things in that uh, patty, right? The, the beef that was in there, that they were saying that was, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's how they, because, uh, of course, they got lots of money and their yeah. lawyers. Uh, Word they it the just best lawyers, right. right. Yeah. Um, but that's a very interesting thing. The meat of the future, how lab-grown meat is made. And then you've got Mike the Vegan, or Mick the Vegan, Test yeah. tube meat is happening now. I don't know if that would be a positive thing or I don't know this guy from Moses, but uh, maybe he would be in favor of that or maybe he'd be adamantly against it. But I would think that if you're a vegan, you should be against any meat, right? Like, Well, right? So some of them that I've listened to and people that I've talked to, they're, they're not against these things because they would wean us horrible meat eaters off of eating the animals so even although they might not eat it because if they're for health purposes that they're vegan then they would still be against that of course yeah. but it's not even meat like it's it's bits and pieces of what makes up meat you know to be enough to have the texture and the taste and then they glue it all together probably oh, right? remember the pink slime yeah <laughs> The pink yeah. slime, if you don't know, uh, you just maybe do a search, uh, McDonald's pink slime. And it's, I think this... it's prepping us all for this. Definitely. The pink yeah. Slime, yeah. Because uh, that's gross. And, you know, but you can get this plant based burger that's going to taste just like it or the no, lab. No, grown no, thing. no way I'm going to eat. Uh, like, there's no way I would ever eat this crap ever. No. I, I would avoid it like the bubonic plague. And I would say that to everyone out there because it's not the same, folks. I mean, yeah, your your hamburger, like, first of all, you probably shouldn't get ground beef. It's not, you know, I mean. Well, if, you buy, if you buy a cow or if you yeah, go yeah. in on a cow, then you know that's just that one cow that that's coming from. But otherwise, yeah, it's thousands yeah, yeah, of yeah, cows, it's, right? It's, it's thousands of oh. cows, like 1,500 cows in your average burger. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of gross. Um, but you know what? I mean, is that more gross than the synthetic lab grown meat? No. <laughs> and will they have to tell you? How will they have to tell you? Because one thing, just looking at like the transglutaminase stuff, the meat glue that I talked about in the last video, that the ways that it is acceptable for them to be informing you that that is used in meat products. Because in the US, you have to use that with meat product, or you have to say that with meat products. But it was things, it was terms like 
hot dog <laughs> and sausage like that these things that they're saying this this has transglutaminase in there see it's called hot dog i mean mm. will they have to is it just going to be some snazzy label label that that lets them get off the hook because it's all about the wording and the like you know you say tell people to read their ingredients list you can't even do that now you got to read the patent and if your food has a patent that's just wrong yeah that's crazy <laughs> you gotta read the patent you do you have that to go through the I mean, definitions that's, that's, that's why it's like okay it's time to get off get out of the grocery store and get in the farm <laughs> Seriously, and not everybody food. has to be a farmer because there's no. community-supported agriculture yeah, and there's things know, like actually, wild. yeah. I mean, well, if if we go back, all right, we'll say, well, China would be a good example. Um, maybe 50 years ago in China, you'd say half the people in China are farmers. Um, a hundred years ago or 115 years ago, half of Americans were farmers. And you're talking small farms before this massive industrial farming took over the Dust Bowl, which probably was, well, it was all choreographed by our banksters. Um, but the 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 whole sort of, um, I mean, we, we all kind of come from uh, uh, more agrarian type societies where this is what most people did. Most people worked on farms. Most people were growing food or, you know, have livestock. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And as Camille said too, I mean, it doesn't have to be everybody, right? You still need your lawyers and you still need your, you know. Do we? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> why did you say lawyers? I don't, know. I don't know. You need your teachers, Right, you metal your, workers. Yeah, your metal your... workers. You need you need people that do things that act that that aren't manipulating people. But um, you still, yeah, you still need you know people to make up communities. So, it, but wouldn't it be a better world if if we were able to take the food back? Well, yeah, and, and it would actually make areas sustainable if people if there were enough people doing the noble practice of farming you know and raising yeah, yeah. things correctly then your town could actually be sustainable because you would be bringing in food right from your local area which might be harder in places where it's not great weather all the time but you got to eat seasonally and you can get big orders from to eat seasonally bananas. too i like eating seasonally because it, it makes me look forward to things exactly Right, it's like yeah. I, I now it's the raspberry season. So it's like yep. <laughs> I all the raspberries. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I, I look forward to you know the different times of year where certain fruits and vegetables and foods are are more prevalent, um, and and you know that all ties into uh, human culture. You know, the whole human civilization and harvesting and you know why Oktoberfest and stuff like that. Why we have you know, these, these sort of massive culture. I mean, now it's all rainbow unicorn everywhere every day, but I mean, we're forgetting what we are. We're forgetting what we, we should be. Oh yeah. And, and this ability to go to the grocery store and buy asparagus any time of the year, it's that now, now, now culture. And yeah, you yeah. don't have any kind of connection to your food. That's don't it. Don't know where I mean, it came from. We don't know where it comes from. Um, and, and we have no idea what's being put into it. I mean, we, we can only, you know, I mean, we look at the, hopefully you're looking at the ingredients, but as, as Camille said, you got to, got to look at the patents, you know, if there's patents on the food, you got to, you're going to be like, whoa, well, if there's a patent on the food, you probably shouldn't be buying it. And I know I've said this on your show before, but people should not be eating California produce. They, they no. are freaky beyond belief on, <laughs> and they have, they have the California Israel partnership too. And they are both, they share their practices and you should not be. And I'm it telling was. you all, if you live in the United States, your produce and your produce department is almost all California. I don't buy anything from the States, like yeah. any veggies whatsoever. Um, and, and it's true. Like the first thing that I see, it's kind of like the Coca-Cola when you go into a convenience store. First thing you see are those California giant strawberries. Yeah. Right. And they always, and there's always a, I mean, it's like flies on crap there's always a, a shit ton of people around them <laughs> usually older people and they're looking because these things they freeze them right they've genetically modified them and and they're abnormally large like yeah. here in quebec um we have tremendously awesome strawberries so i look forward uh, that's Thank when you. i have my strawberries like now so like yep. Today for breakfast, I had a, a, you know, my organic cereal with a huge heaping of Quebec strawberries and they, they're all different sizes and, 
you know, they're not like the California giants where they're just like, what the hell? I mean, they're the half the size of an apple or something like that. Right. It's like, no, there's something not right with this. And of course all these, like I find this too, it's like all, all these, um, fruits and vegetables are being genetically modified so they can be frozen. That's one of the whole tricks, right. For, um, to be able to freeze these things, uh, so they can ship them. Ugh. And, and, you know, and so you get, it's, it's, you know, when you, when you get to your grocer and you're feeling some of the fruit and it's like half frozen, that's probably a bad sign. So, yeah. You know, Cause you don't have the genetically modified labeling. Uh, and then you have to figure out which countries. So if you're buying produce, you got to hope that they're giving you the right countries, right. That, uh, are, are supplying the produce. Um, and then you got to hope that those countries, or you got to know that those countries either have forbidden genetically modified foods. But most of this stuff isn't even genetically modified foods, technically. And this is everywhere. Everywhere is doing this. It's yeah. nowhere is safe. And it that I don't know what happens with this whole scrambling up the life on the roots of the plants, but they're making unnatural life, you know, live on different plants. So what is what does that do? Because you are what you eat and you are what you eat, eat. So if your plants are getting a different kind of food, does that change what that plant is? I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. It's you know, just crazy. So. I mean, yeah. It's like you know, for, for millions of years, a plant evolves and is, is eating yeah. a certain thing. And then all of a sudden, it's not the same plant anymore. No. Right. I mean, when you're, when you're mixing spider genes and goat genes into tomatoes, <laughs> it's not the same tomato. It's just not. I'm sorry. Oh it might taste like it. Right. I have to like tell it? you, I saw earlier because I was looking at something I'll mention in a little bit, but they were talking about how you could create whole new kinds of meat, like uh, meat that's part fish and part beef. <laughs> in one kind you know, of and, and then again, what, what's, you know, like fishing is, is in my opinion, is, is one of the more humane ways to get your meat because the fish so gets stalk, to live. Yeah, they stock the, the creeks and stuff around where i am from the the fisheries and it's like what are they eating what are they putting in there and then they release them and then we have these toxic algal blooms everywhere and it's like oh, yeah what are you guys doing crazy. thank you because <laughs> they want to sell the fishing licenses so they've and got again, to yeah, it, stuff in there goes it, it, like they talk about the gene uh, i i do have a few articles here on the genetically modified uh, salmon uh which is already being sold up here in rainbow unicorn land i think here too yeah 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 and and you know, like if that stuff gets out into the wild, <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. God forbid, but it will happen because how are you going to stop it? Right. I mean, it, and likely that's what they want anyways. I mean, it's just crazy what, and, and then you think about it like salmon. I mean, that's probably my favorite, like what's, well, I would say it's my favorite fish to eat. It's so incredibly good. Right. Um, whether it's Atlantic or Pacific, right? Salmon is just so good. And you think about the fish and the life that they live and how, you know, how robust of a creature it is and the journey that it makes, it, you know, if it, maybe it makes it eventually to your plate, but at least you're eating something that lived and, you know, it's, it's something that came organically from the earth itself. You know, that's what we are. We're not supposed to be growing these things and, you know, creating, you know, lab freaking, you know, concoctions. Oh, they're going to save the world, right? They oh, it's, it's insane. No, no, you know, no, no, you don't. No, know, I'm joking. No, no, but that's what they think. Yeah, that's exactly, oh, yeah. that's exactly their, uh, their philosophy or, you know, that's the philosophy that they put forward. And and a lot of useful idiots will push, and probably a lot of people that work for these 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 networks um, or these um, publications that are promoting this stuff. Oh because yeah, they're just they say idiots. it uses less water, you know, to mm -hmm. grow to to do these things. Which, funny enough, the Savage River Inc., which is who Beyond Meat is, that they they were on the top ten list for the a couple years ago on the. The town that they manufacture in for the their CAFR, the their financial reports there, they were top ten, and they weren't even at scale yet then. But you know, yeah, they're all over the news right now. Yeah, big money. We're gonna show. Money. Actually, maybe we should talk about that right now because look at this. I just had this ready to go here. Um, we're talking about here what what the skyrocketing popularity of Beyond Me <laughs> means for our planet. Yeah. 
McLean's Magazine, which I believe is Post Media, um, which is just New World Order. And here they are talking about Los Angeles-based entrepreneur Ethan Brown. Yeah. And uh, how they came up with their Beyond Meat here, which, again, you can see now. And in, in, I don't know why this thing pops up, but it's an ad uh, here. But um, this is a corporation that they're promoting. So this is, and look at the celebrities. You you you've seen this, right? Like you've oh, talked yeah. about this, right? Oh yeah. So uh, look at these celebrities here. That uh, here is the 2009. This California startup was launched by Ethan Brown and Brent Taylor. Beyond Meat. Yeah, and their their big research project is the Manhattan Beach project. The that they wanted to liken it to. The Manhattan Project with all the no scientists. way. Are you yeah, no, that's their really, oh, really their no. thing. Ethan Brown talked at I think it was Columbia Business School. I think I mentioned this once before, and he he was talking about it on there, and he was he was saying how some of these I think it's that Kyrie Irving guy. He just loves their products. He doesn't even have to be a paid endorsement, but he is one of their ambassadors. So yeah, there. So the the list of um, and you see like. They're trying to make it look just like me. Like, oh yeah, no... it's got fat globs now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and again, your meat's not supposed to look like that. They they like the their meat is injected with nitrogen or whatever, and it like the I don't know the process, but like what like that it colors steaks basically, right? Like a steak, if you got it the way it's supposed to look, it would be as far as I know, it'd be brown. Right? Do you know about that, Camille? Yeah, I mean, mine mine looks pretty good when it comes out. But it's not doesn't look like grocery store meat. That's no, no, that that's it. Because the grocery store meat, they they inject nitrogen or whatever into yeah. it to to color it, or nitrates. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah. So here's the list of celebrities that they're they're showing here. So Jessica Chastain, Snoop Dogg, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, Ky Kyrie Irving. I guess these are NBA stars, right? Chris Paul. Yeah, a bunch of them invested the nba people and then they've got a and w restaurants here so it debuted in canada at a and w restaurants and immediately sold out customers bought 90 000. yeah right whatever <laughs> oh all this stuff they say it sells out of course, so of fast. course. Yeah. sell it sell it sell yep. it yeah you know? like that's the whole thing folks is it's whatever they want it to be so uh, this is what they want people to be talking about this is what people are talking about if they want you to think that this corporation is is doing incredibly well, then you're going to think that if you read their publications, because this is how your mind control works. Um, so uh, impossible burger here. Let's just see. I put in the news here. Yeah. So look at all the articles here that are coming off the Disney media here. Impossible food sets sites on Asia. Yeah. Impossible foods is working on plant-based fish product. Yeah, I heard about that. This this is like what fills my news feed. It's crazy how happening they are. Plant-based health expert reviews Impossible Burger. Plant-based news. Well, if it's plant-based news, <laughs> oh. it's going to be a negative article. Are Beyond Meat and Impossible Burgers better for you? I mean, that's, I mean get the frig out of town. I mean, it's, 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 it's so... It's so ludicrous that they would even suggest that. And are, they're just probably looking at the ingredients list. Just like yeah, that's it. Oh, it's got this many calories and this much salt. And yeah, you know, th this one's better. You know. Yeah, not the stretching, shearing, spinning, high pressure, high temperature, extrusion methods. They're not looking at that or what and, they yeah, have to like, up. Yeah. I should show this then. Let's because like it's important for people to understand because you know like. And I showed this in a video recently, what Google wants you to look at, right? So when you put impa, right? When I get to impo, the second selection here is impossible burger. Yep. So yep. that's what they want you to be searching for or imposters, whatever. Well, I is. think imp the imposter, not that listing there, but I think that's KFC's food that they have to fake the plant-based. Imposter? The I think it's Let's not that, that link there, but okay. that KFC did a... I think it's the imposter. I think it was KFC. Let's see if we can find it. KFC imposter. I could be wrong. Yeah, you were right. Yeah. KFC is imposter burger, a vegan patty. Yeah. Wow. Ew, I didn't know it was that corn stuff. That was like oh, the original. Nasty. And that's that's what's so nasty too, because folks, 
you would think that in the old world where it wasn't all controlled by the same people, these mega corporations would be adamantly against it. It's like the the um, the uh, um, you know the uh, big car giants fighting to prevent electric cars from taking off. Right? It's in their best interest to to fight against any sort of new type of food coming onto the market and coming into their share. But no, they're all embracing it and incorporating it into their menus. It just goes to show you that this is all a global control. And a long running plan. Yes. And yes. Yeah. And, and, and like, I'll show this in a bit here where I talk about the food 2030 here uh, off the European commission, which ties into agenda 2030 and how they're tying it all to global warming and climate change and everything. And then of course, so we got to make sure that everyone has, you know, the, the clean food, <laughs> the, you know, the, say, the way that they sell it, right. Just like the global education system. We want to make sure no children left behind type yeah. garbage. But, um, yeah, so crazy, right? Like, look at, okay. So just to give you an example, that and it's easy to miss all this because like even doing the work that i'm doing is easy not to pay attention to the foods i mean there there are so many things that deserve our attention for sure but come on really foods is definitely up there as as because i mean what are you gonna do <laughs> oh yeah and they want to remake us they do like that george yep. church is the the godfather of crispr the genome editing mm. and his book regenesis is how synthetic biology will reinvent nature and ourselves that's like the subtitle there and you are what you eat so if you're eating synthetic biology is that remake is that what's how this is remaking you and turning you into this this thing i mean these synthetic proteins they're doing like monsanto i've got an article here that a decade ago they're they're teaming up with industry yeah, they're, they're all yeah, about the protein design and they've turned that into a video game thing too remember i sent that oh, to you wow. that they've got people playing games to design your own new proteins and there they've already is. made yeah, the product yeah, they've been doing that for a long time check this out too how this all ties together PETA applauds kfc's modest vegan imposter burger i yeah because PETA didn't like the impossible burger i think it was PETA was mad at them because of the heme because they were forced to do animal testing how dare they do and what are we you know that it's no problem if they feed it to people Those are mm. i i would also say this to folks too um i i love animals i'm uh, oh yeah i mean who doesn't right you're probably not well if you don't like animals but i love animals so much but i i would say without a doubt that a lot of what YouTube and and your Disney media is promoting are animals. Um, whether it be like, for instance, I, I talked about a video about um, a cow who tried to get the attention of of a farmer because her or a, of a pedestrian or something because her calf was outside the fence or something like that. Just like videos like this on a daily basis that come in, so like that they they make you sympathize with um the livestock for instance right that they give personalities to cows and humanize and it, they, them sort of yeah, yeah they humanize them exactly yeah. um so that you sympathize and this is all part of your programming like on the surface and a lot of these stories might be true um you know uh, and a lot of them might just be completely concocted but they serve a purpose they serve an agenda and it's not that you shouldn't be nice to animals and it's not like you know you should hate on cows or anything but no, treat all life with you respect know, which but, is the opposite of what these people are doing yeah it, it, cows have, have been livestock for for you know thousands of years sort of thing so i mean they they they'd be kind of lost without humans <laughs> shepherding them you know and other animals would be tearing them apart so i mean that's the way that, that the world works sort of thing it's not to say i mean i honestly think that if we really wanted i mean that's the thing though i mean it's no point in even making suggestions about how to fix things because it's never going to see the light of day but if we were to fix things uh, one of the ways to fix it would be to um, increase the price of meat 
you know, maybe double the price of meat so that you have half as much. Um, and then we would be using half as much meat and then people would appreciate the meat more. You pay more for it and hopefully you get better quality meat. Well, and then take away the subsidies. Yeah. And yeah. 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 It would be, yeah. It wouldn't it, look so crazy to go buy a cow or part of a cow from a farmer that's going to charge quite a lot more than you. Oh, I can go to the grocery store and get the jumbo pack, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They they make it that cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, this is all so it's so important for people to understand this because like you can get bogged down in these debates with with people uh, about, you know, being pro this, pro that, anti this, anti that. But ultimately, it's our controllers who are setting the table for all of us. But and we're so, paying for it. Yeah, we're paying for it. Well, we can see how we're paying for it. We can see the health of, of the, the average person is, is really bad these days. It's never been worse. And um, people are losing, I mean, people are losing their cognitive ability. I mean, you have all these degenerative uh, diseases, these uh, people that are, are developing Alzheimer's and all these right brain degeneration type diseases, elderly people, which is probably a direct result of the foods I mean, what else would it be? I mean, yes, yeah, the pharmaceuticals, whatever else, uh, chemicals you might have kicking around your house could contribute to all that. Obviously, with the, the gender confusion that all these children are suffering from, um, a lot of that has to do with what the kids are eating and what, what's in their, their atmosphere. Their, um, you know, So th this is all massively coordinated. And uh, yeah, Silicon Valley obviously is one of the places, one of the big um places tel aviv of course i mean i mean just where it's all coming from where where are these uh and that's what you were showing um is that a lot of these corporations coming directly out of silicon valley or israel and yeah. so yeah oh, go ahead <laughs> oh sorry and that the tech a lot of the tech is also uh, yeah. going off of like nasa research mm. so and funny enough, wait, let me send you a link so you can see one of the big people working on the synthetic biology with NASA. Mm. You'll love it. You see the name? Oh, it's Lynn Rothschild. Yeah. But anyway, interesting stuff. Okay, that I'm going to copy that. Bring that over here. But yeah, bio wires, biodegradable drones, bio balloons, and yeah, the synthetic biology for the Yeah, and there you go. It's future. right Silicon Valley, essentially. Yeah. Lynn Rothschild here. Sorry. And the evolution of life on Earth. I mean, these people, these people, these people are sick. What they're up to. Um, this is this and is where I mean, like they. And we talked about this so many years ago. When we were doing these shows, like how like every element of of our civilization is is so planned out. The education system, right? How they're going to program everyone. The genders, the confusion, everything else. But you know, the 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 surveillance grid that they're going to lay out. All these things have been planned so far in advance, and so this is another example of of and and you're talking decades, decades, decades that they've been. You know, Monsanto. Um, a lot of what happened with Monsanto that was pivotal was back in the '90s, right? With like. Um, uh, a lot of the the patents that were passed through and the the sort of revolving door where you had the you know government and monsanto employees switching chairs you know fda <laughs> going from being a director of the monsanto to being the director or the approver of the fda approving the exact products that monsanto was putting on the market um so many of these chemicals um that were introduced aspartame things like that all came through um and it's yeah. using the tech that they that this these people at nasa did that in the 60s and 70s where this the biotech food is going to because right now like I, I don't know i'm not there at the manufacturing i don't know how much they're bringing in of their peas for or the pea protein they probably just buy from a big manufacturer like cargill who is said to be like the worst company in the world well they're behind a lot of the proteins that are going into these foods but mm. people they, I don't know, maybe they'll excuse that now, but the, the research that they did back in the 60s and the 70s is where this one company, Kiverdi, looked at their, their stuff and they're the future. Like they're saying that 
using peas and chickpeas and soybeans, all that, you know, that's going to be bad for the environment too, because we can't do that. So they use the NASA tech and they are, get ready for it, sequestering carbon or carbon dioxide, not carbon. That's the wrong word. Carbon dioxide. Yeah. And they are straight feeding that to the microbes in a process, a chemical process to make them make the proteins. So Mm. it's going to be that way they can, because they say, you know, that the, what is it, the IPCC, they said that even after they cut all of the emissions, we still have to get rid of the stuff that's out there. And it's a good thing, you know, Bill Gates, he's all invested <laughs> in this, all these different meat products. And oh, he's yeah. also invested in something that sucks oh, a yeah. whole lot of carbon dioxide out of the air. It's really convenient that that's such a, a devil that people want to get rid of because it's going to feed the world through this. And, but that's NASA tech. That's Lynn here. That's, that's really crazy. Um, I know you probably haven't seen it, but so that's, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned the movie, the, the, the Omen two. In yeah, the, I looked up a clip of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, is eerie because I think it was 1978 or something like that. And it, it the corporation was called Thorn. Um, but they were going to basically do what Monsanto <laughs> did, which is hijack the world's food supply. So uh, ostensibly they could feed the world, um, but they would make all the um, the um, the peasants or the peasant farmers tenants. Right. Um, and they would. And then, of course, they introduced genetically modified foods. So in the third omen, they're talking about drinking wine that is made from soy. And they're like, isn't this amazing? It tastes just like wine. (laughs) So, (laughs) So, I mean, this is just to give you an example, folks, of how far it's been in in the works. It's been in the works for a a long time. Oh, yeah. You can see old uh, archive videos and stuff, too, where they're talking about this algae will maybe someday provide a whole supermarket full of food. And these are from like the 50s. They're they're, Oh, yeah. yeah, They're just recently. um, Just recently, algae uh, food. I spelled it wrong. Um, It's a tough one. Just recently, they had it in, in Montreal here where Dr. Joe Schwartz was going on about how awesome algae could be in the future. Um, see this uh, live strong. <laughs> you can trust Lance Armstrong's corporation here. Algae is food source for human. Algae yeah. is the superfood of the future. I'm pretty sure it's algae that the one company is using for my, my first presentation I did that they're using it to brew up an artificial colostrum for baby formulas. Oh no. And way. for like uh sports oh, things too. Oh yeah. Wow. The baby formula. Oh my gosh, people, this stuff, like the two fuca silactos, it's in Similac and it has been on the market for like two years. It, uh, it's so That's it's, crazy. It's insane. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> I, I wish I could find that article of largest algae bloom. Um, Cause yeah, I, I took note of that. I was, you know, I have so many things to cover, but I, I was going to be like, Oh yeah, I'm going to cover this one for sure. Um, but I've been noticing that of course, as well here, lab grown protein, people want meat. They don't want slaughter. <laughs> Tell us what we want. Tell us well, what we want. Tell us. Well, they've what had we don't so want. many ex- expose videos showing the animals hanging by their foot, you know, going through the slaughterhouse and they drilled it into people's heads that that's what, that's what meat is. I, I wonder and, now if Texas Chainsaw Massacre, if that was what it was really about. I never saw it. No. <laughs> well, okay. You got the Texas Chainsaw. If you, if you don't like horror films, you're not yeah. going to enjoy it because it's pretty horrifying. But it's basically a horror film from 1976 in which humans are the cattle, oh. basically. So it's a bunch of cannibals that basically capture a bunch of teenagers and you know just use them as cattle basically it's really disturbing it's extremely extremely disturbing but wouldn't that make sense that a film like that would come out with this because that's i mean that's long i mean it seems like it's long ago but no not when it comes to what they've been planning this is stuff that they've been planning for a long long time and horror movies are one of those ways i often i was gonna do a a special because i i actually kind of well, really like horror films. When I was a kid, I grew up watching them, sort of thing. But I was going to do a Halloween special um, this 
Halloween when my channel got suspended, whatever, I couldn't go live, but um, I was going to put up this theory that most horror films are, are really about depopulation <laughs> and that, that, that the basic themes of horror films, especially slasher films, is, is to not have sex, not to procreate and, and that people that do end up dead. And, and Good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's actually that's kind of the theme, because if you if you've people that might be listening have seen maybe the scream uh, films, which kind of do a, a parody or not. It's, it's like a tongue in cheek sort of parody of, of horror films, but it's an actual horror film. But there's rules to the horror films. You never have sex. You never do this. You never do that. So anyways, that's just uh, I'm digressing here. But um, I this is what the way I see things now, folks, um, is that I see that these plans go back, you know, many, many decades, if not further. And so our programming likely goes back much further than we realize. Um, so it's it, in, you know, sometimes it can be coincidental and all that, but um, you'd have to, when you, when you look back now on a lot of the things that maybe you grew up with, you'd have to recognize that a lot of it probably was, uh, you know, it probably never would have been green lighted and <laughs> not had the proper themes. Anyways. On the, um, the people being the, the livestock or whatever, the Texas yeah. chainsaw thing. Did I already tell you that they, they're, they've mentioned it a couple different things I've listened to that the celebrity meat, you know, you could eat your favorite celebrity. Oh yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. 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 All right. that, 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 <laughs> there you go. Right. And then the, the celebrities are all doing the cannibal type. Uh, Maybe bowl. they'll do the advertisements for it too. It's just crazy. I mean, you know, like there's no fixing it folks. Anybody that, says we're going to fix Hollywood. We're going to fix wall street. I mean, get the, you, you. yeah, <laughs> sorry. No. It's, it's not going to be fixed. It's, it never was working to begin with. It was always there for a reason, but anyways, these are the types of, of articles that come up all the time here. This is from a few days ago here, July the 9th, um, lab grown protein. This is a Chicago tribune. People want meat. They don't want slaughter. And our chicken is chicken. You've got to taste it to believe it. Right. And it's Memphis meats, of course. Yeah. The MM33 with the, what is it? The, they have the, um, the symbolism there for their, um, so Memphis meats is based in em Emeryville, California. I wonder if that's Silicon Valley. I don't know. Probably. That whole state, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and that they, uh, is one of the growing number of startups worldwide that are making cell based cultured meat. They want to offer an alternative to traditional meat production that they say is damaging the environment and causing unnecessary harm to animals. Of Which course. I just have to say on the damaging the environment, it's because like they're going from having intensive animal agriculture and they are like, Oh, the only way to fix this is to go to the laboratory. But I am seeing on that ag funder news site that I talked about in a video once that Montana ranchers can now get paid to sequester carbon using rotational grazing practices. So they can get like, they can make out with this carbon credit thing if they raise cattle the way they're supposed to be raised like mm -hmm. moving them to fresh pastures and mm -hmm. doing all that it's actually good for the environment which the good farmers have been saying this whole mm -hmm. time that if you just do it right but anyway well, that's, sorry. that's what we said before too i mean like one of the when i was saying solutions there are solutions right they're, they're not going to happen because they're not part of our controllers plans so yeah. i mean for us we, we can suggest them and we could say but i mean it's folly to think that um you know that doing the right thing is going to happen. It's not going to happen because they don't want us on this planet. They want to get rid of us. So they want to take control of our food and change us. Um, and this is exactly what's going on. It's already happening. People are already becoming less and less human and they are dehumanizing the kids. I mean, it, it's so disturbing what they're doing to kids where they're normalizing things like depression you know, um, mental Brave new illness. world. Sorry, because aren't they all yeah. so sad? And the the children are fondling each other out. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. It, 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 and, and there was um, Woody Allen who had the film, their sleeper, which was uh, some dystopic future, and you know, and then people had the orgasmatron and stuff like that. I mean, like a lot of these, a lot of what they showed us 
back, say, with Brave New World, Aldous Huxley, right? Way back, I was like 1930s or something like that. Is is already come to fruition in many ways, you know. Um, and this is likely where it's going because we're going to see a whole different type of human beings coming out in the future. The CRISPR babies alone are going to be radically different. I mean, maybe not the first generation, maybe not the second generation, but over time, they're going to become radically different than the traditional human being. Oh, yeah. Like George Church talks about in this book, you know, he's like, we want to make people into mirrors, uh, like a mirror of themselves, like the the handedness of how Ooh. things fit together, because that way that we'll be safe from all the sicknesses that are out there because they won't recognize us. Yeah. Have you seen that film um, Us by Jordan Peele? Because in, in that, there's the mirror of, like, everybody has a clone, basically. Oh. And they cut the clone. Like, the, it's, oh, my God. Because Jordan Peele is, is a big-time insider of the New World Order. Big time. He's married to Chelsea Peretti, who's the sister of Jonah Peretti. So she's the star of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And she's a, you know, bagel. And her brother is the CEO of Buttfeed, <laughs> right? So, like it, the, these movies that come out show a lot of of what either is to come or what their what their plans are for us. They're very very disturbing. So that movie that was a, a huge movie this past year that came out, I did get a chance to see it. I'm gonna have to watch it again uh, to really analyze it. But that's the theme: is everyone has a mirror, everyone has a a clone sort of thing. Um, and it's like a psychopathic clone of themselves. Um, of course, cloning is a whole nother thing that ties into all of this as well, because like, I imagine a lot of this stuff is going to incorporate some of the cloning type of tech and what they're using to clone. Plant. Yeah, do you people out there know that that's been allowed to be fed to you? Cloned meat and yeah. all that. It's 2008, totally legal. Go to the FDA's website and you can see it. And they were Cloned doing that meat. before then. I didn't even look that up. I should put look at it's that up. It's in the it's notes from my cloned meat. Video. Yeah, FDA. <laughs> Clone. Yeah, are we eating cloned meat? Wow. Yeah. Yes. How do I know are. if I'm eating cloned meat? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, whoa. You is... can't know. I don't see how you could know. They've been doing oh, it for so long. I don't so see how you can know. Diabolical. It's it's that's is it though. I mean, there is a solution. Uh, it's not for everyone. It's for you and your family. That's the solution. You get off their system. It's the only no. way. This is not going to stop. This is you're only going to get worse. This. No, this yeah. is this. No, you honestly, I think that yeah, we have to do for ourselves and make sure that we're that we are paying attention to what we're eating because that's the only way you can change the world is with yourself. But you got to tell your neighbors, and then you all mm. have to like pitchforks go to your city council meetings and be like, oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, Com yeah. comprehensive annual financial reports. Why are you invested in all these com companies? And do they even know? Do the individual governments know that they? are all part of this big picture where they all own all of these things that are destroying us all. I don't know. That, Maybe okay, that's it. It, it's hard to know. I mean, like obviously their, 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 their agents and their shills are, are sprinkled in there, but most of these people are probably useful idiots that yeah. buy into them. I mean, they watch television. Yeah. And they go for their training at Harvard and they get told yeah, yeah, this Harvard, how you do exactly. your job. And yeah. And maybe they're perfectly good people. They just don't know. Honestly. They just don't know. Yeah. They I, well. In addition to, I've rented the community room at my local co-op to give the presentation that I'm tweaking. But that last video that I did, I've got mm -hmm. the room booked in, oh gosh, like 15 days. And that's crazy. But anyway, People can do that. You can take my presentation and present it. But I'm also thinking of renting that room again to to do a viewing of that uh, four hour long epic pension fund thing. You got it. Wow. We got to tell people yeah, if there's anywhere that you can put this stuff because they don't know. I make people's eyes pop out of their heads when I just give them yeah. a quick flip <laughs> and they're just like, wait a minute. Huh? I mean, they yeah. don't know. They just and don't they, know. Well, they, they I mean, their, their television is not going to tell them. It. And this stuff, like we let synthetic biology keep going, and well, it's, it's it just like these is, articles, right? I mean, uh, these articles are designed to, like, oh no, it's not so bad. Why don't you try it? Just like the the YouTube celebrities and everyone saying, well, let's try what everyone else is trying, right? Yeah. Another one, fresh from the lab, startups make cell based cultured meat that avoids slaughter. You see how it's 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 titled. I mean, it tells you the whole thing here. It avoids slaughter. 
Yeah, it's, like, it's we're, not going to need all those scary things that happen it's in not, agriculture. It's not, it's not like Israeli corporations making, you uh, know, Franken food. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that might fuck your children up. You know, <laughs> no, it's going to filter the carbon dioxide yeah. out of the air in your yeah. cubicle house so that it can brew up your your meat right on your counter. And that'll also power your little vertical farm in there. And you'll never have to leave your cubicle and you can just virtual reality everywhere. Run your little robots. Uh, the synthetic biology goes in another crazy thing. Can I say real quick? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. it's a fictional story, of course, but, you know me and michael crichton <laughs> did you read prey i know i think i know i have no, okay I, I, prey yeah. is crazy because it's nanobots people which you should be paying attention to the nanobots side of things ray kurzweil wants to have nanobots in your blood are they there we don't know anyway how did they finally i'm sorry i'm gonna spoil it for you all how did they finally figure out how to get these nanobots together because that was the big problem and this is something i've seen too it's a big problem they have how do they assemble them make them self-assembling synthetic biology they brew them up pieces and parts in their little bio bots and i i can't think that's terribly far from no a possibility uh. it's synthetic oh, there's competitions around the world this is like promoted at the big universities you know things that people think are great things like yeah it's got to be a full stop this well, it's got to stop you, you got to be a, a very scared of solutions um <sighs> because these solutions are nightmarish i mean they're they're not they're the, the, there are sensible solutions to to you know you, you just if meat is more expensive there's less of it and cows are better treated chickens are better treated people pay more you have less of it you're less obesity um you know well, less and the, food. the hell with the money you know like we have to yeah. end of the world as we know it in a good way and all of this goes, I mean, because if we keep any of it, you know, the money or, yeah. or any of it, like it all has to change. Everything has oh, yeah, to change. Oh, yeah, I agree. I, agree. I, I mean, we <laughs> just have to shed Wait off this. Table, that is <laughs> yeah, everything. It all. It's, yeah. It, it's crazy. So, It'll yeah, be I mean, better. The, the, the crazy thing, too, is that even the solution, which I propose to everyone out there, which is the only real solution, which is to get yourself off their grid. Um, they're trying to prohibit people from from living that lifestyle everywhere. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Wait, mm -hmm. I gotta d go away from food again real quick because yeah. the the book I'm reading right now, Eyes in the Sky: The Secret Rise of Gorgon Stare and How It Will Watch Us All. This book is a brand new book. I watched this author was interviewed on that Silicon Valley show. I watched Triangulation. They are already watching every damn thing. Every oh yeah, that's thing. it with the and drones. They can see and yeah, yeah. And They'll they can, have the insect drones if they don't already. Well, I mean, it's just. This gives them the ability to, from up above, watch entire cities, but also yeah. zoom in on all these different things oh, like yeah, the yeah. soda straw view. And they can track like 8,000 bodies at a time. I mean, they know everything. They oh, know I showed, if I showed this uh, back in 2013. I, I still remember it was called Argus IS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Argus yeah, yeah. is in there. I yeah. did a video on this and it was like this. These drones that they already have and they've had for many years, which are, are ultimately are, are by now far more advanced. But back then they could focus in on anything the size of a candy bar and they yeah. could stay up perpetually. And two of them could cover Manhattan um, and they could track every step of every human being. And, and they, they, they list all these different yeah. companies here that are providing these services domestically. So this is like, this is how they know if you are, you got land and you're improving it. That way they can send you the letter. I'm speaking from experience here. They can send you the letter saying, hey, we saw you move some dirt. <laughs> so, no joke. I'm no, not even kidding. Insane. Happened that is in real life. No, I'm serious. That is just. But that. this, the technology is so cheap, as they're talking about in this book, you know, the cell phone cameras really help to push the tech through because we all want a better camera on our cell phone. We all need a new cell phone all the time. And that that drove the price. The price is so low. It's just well, like the satellite. You know, it's interesting because yeah, I know you, you, you uh, correspond with Dr. Mumby there. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if she saw that one. You might want to send it to her, but I'm, probably she did see it where... Um, Melinda Gates was talking about how deprived African women are because they don't have smartphones. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, and then they said, well, what would smartphones give you? And it'll give them the ability to search the internet privately. <laughs> like, I'm so sad watching like, Dr. Mumby lately because ever since she was 
with this one group. Now she's got, instead of a binder with paper, she has a tablet and she has oh. a cell phone sitting there and she's on this whole other kick. And I, I don't uh, even know. Maybe, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You got to hope. Um, all right, so here's another right, one here. Fresh, <laughs> fresh from the lab, startups that make meat that avoids, uh, avoids slaughter, of course. Again, Memphis meats here again. The yeah. black and red, right? Because and, all, the animals matter, but you don't. You're going to well, eat synthetic food because you're not like you're a child of this universe, too. You know? No, I know. Yeah. I, I, I mean, ethically, it's just out of this world. It, it's it's like this should never be happening. I mean, the, the, the reason why we're supposed to have things like the FDA, right, and, and – the Canadian, whatever the Canadian equivalent is, I can't remember the name escapes me at the moment. The, uh, it's to protect citizens so that any of these types of foods that try to be introduced are are thoroughly, thoroughly tested and and would take you know potentially decades for them to be approved. But this is, of course, we go back to the revolving door of Monsanto and the FDA. Um, the reality is that you know your uh, the the government bodies are in bed with these corporations, and, and they let the corporations write the laws. They yeah, let, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's one in the same. It's a corporatocracy. Yeah. It's 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 one in the same. It's and we're no difference. For it. Sorry, so you're going to get this. Um, and there's a gazillion articles all coming out. All they're all favorable. Uh, dealing with this um, Memphis meats. Here's the Scientific American here with chemistry. Lab-grown meat, beef for dinner without killing animals or the environment. You see, right away, you know what it's all about. Yep. You, you know that this is not going to be an unbiased sort of examination, <laughs> you know, thorough sort of, you know, questioning of what's going on. This is this is an agenda. The agenda is, well, don't you love those animals? Don't you love the environment? Look what we're doing to it. Don't you want to eat those burgers? Well, you know what? You can still eat the burgers and you could still save the polar bears. I'll just give you these Memphis meats. <laughs> yeah. It smells like cat food. Yeah, don't uh -huh. worry. It's... <laughs> yeah. The the one of the vegan conversations that I had, they were telling me that there's not enough pasture land to raise animals enough for people to eat. But wasn't it on your show where we were all talking about just how much room is really needed for all the people. And maybe there is enough room and well, they, maybe using animal agriculture correctly would be a whole heck of a lot better than the monoculture fields. And, but you wouldn't want to put animals right on those things right now. Yeah. I mean, if, if, we, if we were all, we all had a modest amount of land that we could grow and have some livestock and stuff like that, we would eat less meat. Um, we would work a lot harder. We'd be outside all day. <laughs> you wouldn't have to work out because your yeah. life wouldn't be made you easy. Have, you would by... have to go to the gym. Yeah. No. It would just be living. It would just <laughs> be living. But they remade day. how food is. They, I mean, what they say the Industrial Revolution changed everything food-wise. And, I mean, if we just go – I don't know how easy it would be to go back. But if people could just – want to go back to it i mean yeah but that's the thing people, change. people are trying and they are they, they've got us in the crosshairs so everybody that is either homesteading or is 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 planning on homesteading like every day I'll, I'll show you an article here i've got it here dealing with just here in quebec where um they just put new restrictions. They just passed new laws on um, on homeschooling here. Parents outraged over new Quebec homeschooling rules. So it's just another example. It's interesting, the Canadian Jewish news here. It's interesting, though, that the gov this is what the governments are. I mean, the governments are full of useful idiots, obviously. I'm not saying that everyone that works in the government is is somehow in the know and is, you know, plotting to take control of your kids and all that no they're just stupid but what we're going to have every day going forward and we've had for the past 10 years even further back is an attack on people that are trying to extra extract themselves and their families off the grid they want to make it impossible for that because that then you're beating their system and then if you did and you were producing your own food then their foods 
and their mind control would have no effect on you and your family. Yeah, you won't be getting your micronutrients, your fluoride, and whatever else they call micronutrients if you're yeah, producing yeah. your own food. And if they if they're homeschooling, gosh, they won't get that excellent sex ed curriculum. You should. Have <laughs> I freaked wow. a woman out at a yard sale telling her about that. The oh my other god! Day. You saw that? Eh? It's, it's, yeah. Wow. It, it's, oh, it's 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 out of this world what they're doing. I mean, it, it is out of this. I got called um, because I did the video there. Um, well, I mean, this is typical, but the the video um, on the uh, drag kids and yeah. and they, they they called me out for harassing. They reported me. Somebody on on Twitter said they reported me for harassing. It's like, yeah, how could they have even watched that video and said that? <laughs> yeah, I know it's like harassing, but but that's it though. It would fall under YouTube's guidelines of harassment um, because that's the way that these people roll this is this is they're they're evil that's all i can say and yeah youtube's you, guidelines are so crazy what yeah. it's community guidelines okay. type in gay god you're gonna get one of such a disturbing youtube channel no age restriction on this thing it's insane. oh yeah, yeah oh my gosh the things that are allowed gonna, i was gonna tell call for an uprising there that 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 jesus guy that they got on youtube was just at the vidcon which and, Jesus uh, guy? Well, yeah, the, I don't know. There's you, probably several YouTube. Uh, Jesus, <laughs> this is a, this is a good channel. There's a guy with a channel. I don't know what he calls himself, but he's got like a yeah. This guy, Jesus oh, Christ. Oh gosh, he's, seriously? Oh, Christ. Yeah, this guy, this piece of shit here. Oh my word. Um, was at VideoCon, so um, VidCon, uh, with. Growing Josepha, Nerdy Nummies, and calling Ballinger and and Shane Dawson and the whole Susan Wojcicki, Superwoman. And he went and, to the Pride Parade. Yeah, ex of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pride. I mean, this guy seriously deserves a serious beating just for, for making a channel like this. But, I mean, this is just goes to show you how evil these people are. Um you can mock, you know, I, I would never mock anyone's religion, really. I mean, I, I just imagine, imagine if I did this as like mocking, you know, Judaism or, or Islam or something like that, I, I'd be taken down so quickly, but oh, yeah. anyways, it's just a <sighs> story, but it, it goes to Sorry. show you all these, all these characters are connected. They're all, they're all together. They're all working for the NWO. And uh, anyways, yeah, it's a bit off, off, track but get back here so just to show folks here this is off of wired lab grown meat is coming whether you like it or not mm. <laughs> so you know sometimes you don't really need to dig into the article <laughs> you just see the headline you get an no, idea it's the same thing over and over no. again yeah here's it. finless foods ff here finless foods which is growing a fish meat which had been feverishly pursuing the so-called clean meat of late clean meat. Like, like my whole thing on this, of course I understand what this is all about, but my whole thing is like, don't eat meat. Then if that's the problem, just don't eat meat and don't fake it. And if, if you want people to stop eating meat, you know, make, uh, make vegetarian or vegan foods, you know, better. I don't know. Well, Mark that them better. That guy, the Beyond Meat guy, with the when he was talking about the Manhattan Beach project, he was also talking about how. Uh, now I don't, I don't know, I wasn't there, but they are, he's saying how we evolved back in the day when they started eating meat and our body systems changed, so we didn't have to be able to digest all this plant matter, which some say we don't even contain the enzymes needed to break down plant cell walls without having other things added to our diet. So, but uh, he's saying how it is. A good thing to eat meat but obviously not to eat meat this way that's why they're doing the nature identical the the molecular equivalent mm. products because golly you still need those things that meat provides but we're just going to do it a new way yes that's it right yeah. so they, and they're not going they're, after the vegans although that one youtube channel this one does fit our topic ghetto vegans these people eat all the processed all the the this vegan stuff it's so crazy their videos they've been popping up in my thing and they drink that drink i saw them sipping that the lacroix 
Oh gosh. They're drinking that. Yeah. People, people that are watching just for a sec, don't, don't take my subscriptions to these channels as an endorsement. Oh, (laughs) I have so many crazy subscriptions. You got to follow these people. Yeah. You you got to keep an eye on And they're mukbanging, as you see, like everything's a mukbang and they're, they talk with their mouth full and all kinds of stuff. It's interesting. And their children are in it too. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So just more of your YouTube employees. Pushing the bad stuff, like the most processed things. They're not even, I mean, eat what you want to, but it's this, it's vegan seafood. <laughs> it's just retarded. Yeah. It's like the mock crab meat that's been on the market for ages. Like yeah. Stuff, eh? What is that stuff? Okay. So it's good to keep an eye on those. Um, here's science line. The shortest distance between you and <laughs> Okay, I guess if you say so. That's their slogan here. The shortest distance between you and science. It's they okay to be it. smart. It they must be true. Channels, right? They put like, it there. Uh, I'll just put it there. It's okay to be smart. You got to wonder. Wait, what was the second? Channel. You should do that again. It's a, what was the second? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Wait. It's, yeah, see? No, okay, no. Where come? Yeah, there. Yeah, look, I. No, but go a little further. Do okay, it's oh. Wait. Let's just put I. It's okay. <laughs> I thought that the next one down was something like "It's okay to be gay." Song. Sorry, when you oh, started typing it is. It's things. Okay. It's, it's okay to be gay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. There it is. it's okay yeah. to be gay. Song. Sorry. There you Side go. Note. Nice, good spotting there, tomboy. Of course, two point nine million views. It's okay to be gay. Wow. So yeah, it's all part of the same agendas. It's yeah. So oh, it's okay to be smart. Is it's okay to be a retard and to be, you know, mind controlled by your overlords. So sub these channels. I'm sub to all these channels on Supreme Lord Commander. I'm on my Jeff censored account. So a lot of them. But this is how they uh, they lure you in. It's interesting that they're using the junk food. And that's what they do is they promote all this stuff. Why do Disney princesses look like babies? I mean, like, come on. It's okay to be smart. You're going to make a channel like that and you're going to put up a video talking about why. Do... <laughs> oh, boy. It's just, okay. We're, we're off track here. Um, so, yeah. The truth about lab-grown meat. Producers say they will roll out, cl- roll out clean meat products soon. But would you eat it? Yeah, because people, the problem that people had was that in order to grow the stem cell meats, they had to use the bovine serum that, yeah. so, and that wasn't meat free, but they made a plant based version. Oh. So it's okay. And that probably was a controversy. They created it just to push this in. Pace yeah. and Rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> um, an open field where plump, well fed livestock waddle their way through the glass under the eye of honest local farmers. That's how people like to envision where their meat. People don't envision where their meats come from. I know this because I don't envision. Do you, I mean, like I know that their meat it, comes from McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Most people are just eating their, their burgers or their chicken and they're not thinking at all about the chicken and the life that the chicken had or anything. They're just hungry. They're eating. So, you know, people don't have these fantasies, but, where it is pretty cool. I'll say it again. There's a website. It's called Eat Wild. And if you Google that, it'll come up and you can see the farms like you can find the farm in your area that's raising the kind of thing you want to do. You go there, you meet the people and you that's see what it's all about. And it is, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, but but you get what you pay for. Less is more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And less it is. is more. And it is. It is. I mean, then you appreciate it more. It's It's okay. It's like like all things in life. I mean, if you have an excess of something, then you, you stop appreciating it. This is, you take it for granted. And right? you pay now or you pay later. Cause what is that other stuff going to do to you? You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's but it. Even, so. even if people were to start and like go out and order chickens, please do people go watch my last video. Cause they're even tampering with the little chicks that you'd order. So you could raise your own chicks and everything. Yeah, you have absolutely. to be so on it where you're going to get the stuff. And we just have to stop this whole thing. Yeah. But, uh, it has to people please help. Oh yeah. And wait, can I say, mm-hmm. I, I know I've already told you this, but I'm talking to everybody out there. I am, 
am blocked. I'm not able to comment and tell people to check out the stuff that I've taken this time to put together. YouTube won't let me talk to the vegans. I did jump in a live stream the other day and I got a hold of them and but then they they went on to talk about lab grown meat and not the plant based meat. But I can't even leave a comment on a YouTube video. If I log out, it goes away. So maybe you guys can do it. And maybe you could just upload so the videos it, on your own channels. And you is could it just share on them. that channel or is no, it? No, no, no. Wow. Okay. No. So there you go. Oh, I can comment on your videos though, ah! <laughs> yeah. but it maybe it's your settings. Cause there is yeah. that whole like safe comment sort of thing. Oh yeah. Well, change. I don't have any of that. No, neither do I. That's why I, I actually, uh, yeah, I, um, there are certain, uh, channels out there that, uh, do similar work that, uh, shadow ban me. <laughs> Yeah. I leave comments that uh, maybe, you know, actually, I'm always polite. I never, never take shots at people that I'll give my opinion. And I'll tell you, there are some people out there that um, talk a lot about how awful the censorship is and, and all this crap. And yet they censor people like myself from leaving comments. And all my comments are polite and I'm not spamming comments. I'm yeah. making in new comments every time. And even if I'm replying to other people's comments, those don't show up. Like when, if I log out, it is nothing is under their comments anymore. And yeah. so please people, can you tell people, because I mean, this is really the thing well, y'all you... got to tell them please you're, you're one of the uh one of the people that's really in the know when it comes to what's going on with this so that's that's they they've obviously clued in on that and they yeah. <laughs> you know it's it's like me you know wanting to comment on on certain things it's not gonna happen you know yeah. uh, you, you just and it, it that that's it though i mean it's like look youtube is is evil yeah yeah, it's evil. Okay, yeah. not, not all of it's evil. Probably most people on it aren't aren't evil, but the people that run it are evil. I'll yeah. tell you this without hesitation: they should all be locked up, and all the star YouTubers should be locked up with them. Um, what they're up to, the the social engineering and the pushing of all this crap. I mean, this is exactly how it works. All these big YouTube celebrities. That's why I brought up the Jesus Jesus Christ guy. You know, because I saw him on David Dobrik's video and he said, that's my favorite YouTuber. Of course, I wonder, you know, I mean, you can't even talk about people now to talk about, but that's how it works, right? They're, they're, they, YouTube it's a something. full on them tube and it's a full on evil uh, assault on, on children. Um, and it's so useful because so many of these like think tanks and the seeds and chips and all these different things that are all about the remaking of all of us. They put it all on there. You just got to be able to find it. But it's you could just watch them tell you everything that they're doing. They put that on there too and mix it in with the the perverts. Yeah, exactly. But people aren't looking for that on there. So as you see here, just a little bit of this article here. Again, the exact same 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 rhetoric that they use all the time. Because they they tell you first, oh, that you you imagine your cow. Well, you see your cows. I mean, most of your your cows are aren't in huge buildings they're out and they're grazing so but then again right here the reality is however that most of the beef consumed in the u.s comes uh by the way of industrialized system that confines cows to small pens in vast feedlots where they are fattened with hormone laced grains before being shipped away for slaughter in what essentially are meat factories and yeah, okay, there's some truth to that for sure. But the solution is not to make synthetic meats. The solution is just to fix that and put regulations in place, simple regulations in place that would prohibit that type of farming. And then the consumers can absorb the cost. Then the cost of meat, maybe it doubles. That's fine. We have half as much meat. We have half as many or half as many fat people, right? And if we could just do the same with the soft drinks, then we're going to win, right? But that's not what's going to happen. Because our controllers don't like us. They don't want us to be healthy at all. They don't want your mind to be healthy. This is the whole thing with the depression. Um, there was an interesting tweet. In fact, I should probably show this. Um, I'll just bring this up for a second here. One of my uh, listeners uh, sent this to me, which I, I thought was great. Um, here. Uh, it was Jim Carrey. Yeah, here it was. Okay. Um, I, I guess he said this, but he's speaking the truth here, right? I believe de depression is legitimate, but I also believe that if you don't exercise, eat nutritious food, 
get sunlight, get enough sleep, consume positive material and surround yourself with support, then you aren't giving yourself a fighting chance. Yeah. There's no lies there, folks. Um, but that's the reality. We don't have a fighting chance because people are not eating good foods. Yep. And and as we've illustrated here, the vegan channels that are being promoted by YouTube are pushing the worst foods. I mean, it's all garbage, fast food, synthetic food, you know, chemically laced food, salt and sugared food and, and high fructose corn sugar and everything else thrown in there. Chemical concoctions. So, right, the reality is, is is they want to normalize these things so they're just like the that's why i put in the title the unhappy meals do you remember that one oh Camille? yeah oh yeah that yeah the unhappy meals coming from i think it was burger thing yes and that, they have you know, rolled out the impossible burger nationwide so yeah you there you go now. isn't that interesting that they had the unhappy meals now they have the impossible burgers um yes. isn't it funny so if we think about it, you are what you eat. If you're eating these synthetic foods, you're likely going to be very miserable. And then if you're consuming their their culture, the Disney culture that is everywhere, um, you're going to be miserable for sure. If you're watching their CNN and you're reading their New York Times, well, you're going to be super miserable. And then you're going to read that vulnerability is a strength and that you should identify as your sexuality and, and obesity is, is – or, you know – Fat shaming is horrible. And that you're amazing. You're amazing. Even if you're depressed, you're the best. So they are turning us into uh, subhuman beings. It's, it, you know, it, it, again, another, um, well, it's a book, but um, I, I've referenced it several times is the, um, uh, the Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Do you know that one? Yeah, I read that. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. You know, like the Morlocks and, and the Eloy, I think they're called, where you have the Morlocks that live underneath. Like, well, this is just a, there's a time, guy has a time machine and he's in, I don't know, 1950s England and he goes forward deep into the future, thousands and thousands of years. And then he finds the people on the surface have this idyllic life. There's no worries, no care. They just, their food is magically prepared for them. And they don't realize that there's monsters beneath them, which are other human beings that have lived underneath the earth and have mutated into these creatures and that they're using these people as cattle sort of thing. So the reason why I mention that is because I think that's a good analogy for how the average person is. The average person has no idea, but they are actually cattle. Well, yeah, and it, at the very least, like a giant science experiment because you figure yeah. everybody's got registration numbers of some sort, social securities around the world, right? And so everybody's got these things and they're getting their shots and, and they're going here and going there and they they can see what's happening to you. I mean, you go to the doctor and they put you on a diet. Well, let's see what happens with this one <laughs> if they mm -hmm. go on that diet. And then they can see, I think they're very damaged and they've got a lot to fix. Hence the synthetic biology and the, and the making the clones and everything. They've, they've got some issues that the, the people at the top are dealing yeah, with. Yeah, we're, we're the guinea pigs. Yeah, right? we're the guinea pigs. Definitely. We and are. that is unacceptable. I mean, it's absolutely unacceptable that this yeah. is going on. And there that, they are. Sorry, Perfect Day Foods. I just saw that pop what's up that? there. Perfect Day Foods. That's what I was talking about. That's the ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had this open before, uh, so it's ironic, but it's it's very apt, right? So Perfect yeah. Day. I mean, look at the, the way that it's sold. And these people from the very beginning of when I started looking at them, they were open about, I'm shocked they came out with an ice cream because they said that they didn't even consider that you were going to go to the store and buy their product. They were going to replace the ingredients on your, your food, like that you would buy your cookies and it has milk or whatever in there and they were going to be that milk. And well, what does the label require? Mm. That's patents. It. God, read the patents. It's <laughs> freaky, people. It is crazy. Why does food have a patent? Yeah, no, well, that's it. Don't eat why, it. Why is food coming from, from Silicon Valley? <laughs> yeah, well, computational protein design because they've sequenced all the life there is and they keep going with it and they can brew it all up. They can make anything, yeah. mix and match yeah. with the computer and they're having you play a video game to do it for them. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, they they are um, 
that's the whole thing is is they control every element of our civilization or every every element of of our foods our our news our media our music our our entertainment our films seriously the end of the world as we know it i would feel fine i would I don't like this, what we have going on here. <laughs> I would feel fine. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get the news. Uh, asteroid's going to hit the earth tomorrow. And she's like, I'm fine. <laughs> no, no, they'll they'll rein that puppy in and they will start mining it. They'll like, they'll uh, yeah. throw it in orbit around the earth somehow and they will just mine it. I think that they'd like that. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, uh, I understand. I'm not calling I mean, for the doom. I'm saying the end of this this system that is yeah, the yeah. world. I like yeah. the planet and I like being here. I'd like to stay, but I don't like this. And oh, I know, I, I know. I mean, that's yeah. I, mean, I know stop, you don't stop either. the ride, right? <laughs> yeah, please stop the ride. You did leave the place out. I mean, out. And, and it's it's that's the thing. I mean, take your poison. It. You know, tonight we're talking about foods, but you know, tomorrow I can talk about movies. You can talk about. You know, uh, you could talk about genders and what they're doing, schooling, the education system. I mean, it's all the same. E yep. Everything, every element of our society is is controlled now. So that's why the only answer. I mean, as I said, I mean, like, you're, you're, come on, the you, political system. <laughs> political system. I mean, like, you're doing the right thing. You and and your mom and 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 like minded people who would go to these community meetings. That is essential. Everyone should be doing that everyone should be doing that if they can right because that's where you know boots on the ground and you're gonna you're gonna talk with you know and rub elbows with people that are you know like-minded or just people in your own town sort of thing um, and raise awareness that way and um, people could just book those rooms and their places and show the videos and then say let's talk about this yeah you're yeah. happy that your stores are selling this stuff are you happy that your medicine is this way you know get people don't have to be don't i mean i gave all the information of everything that i well not every single thing i've looked at i would have a hard time collecting it all together but almost everything is in my notes there and you don't have to be an expert but you, or not that i'm an expert you don't have to know all of that but you can go and look through it all but you can share it because it makes sense i'm sorry it makes sense you got to be crazy to think that this is the way that we're we should go i'm i'm gonna say that or under mind control because yeah yeah That's dude, it. Just, it's not, it doesn't make any sense. So just take it and show it to people, please. And go and t go tell the vegans on YouTube, tell the, tell the and, people and out there. That's why, I mean, the, uh, you know, they, they've been building up the whole vegan movement. It's, it's probably that most vegans, um, are, are just good people or just honest people that, um, have no idea how they're being manipulated. Well, remember that even for the, the plant based, the whole food plant based, vegans the ones that aren't eating the beyond burgers they're just eliminated any kind of animal products and they use plants the guy running the or right at the start of it that forks over knives remember caldwell esselstyn he is skull and bones his father-in-law is skull and bones his brother is skull and bones who are these people <laughs> exactly there yeah. you go mm -hmm. so you know there's a reason why you know these movies get featured probably at Sundance and yeah uh, you know these that's these the one that turned of... my dad vegan was forks over knives yeah, well, yeah. and yeah. I wouldn't be surprised that was at Sundance festival it's um uh, it's you, where your your direct mind control is is coming from uh people see these movies and they're well done and and then they shock you and, and well, then... they, they say that if you eat fast food you're going to be sick so go vegan how does that we're missing a step there don't eat fast food yeah that's it make your don't own food, food you know as much as you can with good ingredients and you can people we can all contact our companies please do and say are you doing this because this and are the companies that you're getting the ingredients from are they using synthetic biology like I'm going to make a, a, I'm going to put together a form letter, an email sort of thing, and I'll put it on my steam. It, I can't right now. I got to get this presentation tweaked and make a PowerPoint and everything with my mom, but I will put together a letter and then you can all just copy it, fill in the blanks, send it off and ask all these companies, not that they're going to care, but that's not even, that way you would know. But I yeah. seriously, we got to start at the, 
we own this stuff, guys. We own it in our own little ways. And people have to, at the very base of it all, because all the, the banks, the pharmacy, pharmaceutical companies, the tech, the food, it's all, it's all owned by you. We can, we can fix this. I think we can. But we all have to stop. We we got to bundle up and be faggots, remember? <laughs> we have to. The, the bundle of sticks. We got to bundle, bundle up, everybody. Come on. Mm. And not in a kumbaya, like everything will be okay. It won't be okay. If you don't stop this, everybody, if you don't talk about this everywhere and not be that it doesn't sound crazy. It sounds crazy that they're doing it. But when you, if you just give a little simple simple soundbite of what they're doing people will be like that's insane you know you got it mm. it shakes them tell people i'm sorry <laughs> you know ah. yeah, it almost needs to be all put together in some sort of um documentary type film um which would, would be a big watch endeavor a long video because i would work on it but then i get told ah five minutes is my limit and i think he's listening to this right now who told me that so five <laughs> minutes is your limit <laughs> i disagree <sighs> wholeheartedly okay I, I need to tell people this because and, and i do understand like i do like that there is a formula that that works and it's like that 10 minute sort of formula that a yeah. lot of good people uh very talented people employ and um you know uh I, I totally dig that really graceful is one example right makes amazing videos keeps them you know short because she understands that most people don't have that type of, and yeah that's the truth if you want to reach the average person you got to keep it shorter because the average person is, is stupid yeah they're watching <laughs> but, something but else. if you if, if you've got really important information it's impossible to, to cram that all together, especially on a topic that's so big as this. There's so much. Like, we have just scratched the surface on on a lot of this stuff. Oh, yeah. um, and there's there's so much digging. To, you know, who are these people? Who are the, the people that run these corporations? What are their histories? What are they affiliated with? You know, you, you can dig into the history of, of when this stuff was first conceived. You know, when, what, what do we have? The earliest documents, the earliest studies, which universities are involved, the, all, all these different academic. Yeah, that's God. it. Right. It's you know, terrible. I mean, they're, they're, to me, I, I, I never practiced that policy. Uh, not that I don't think it's, or I think it's a bad policy, which I'm saying the condensed sort of 10 minute video. Um, it's just not my style. And, and I prefer to, <laughs> you know, it's like making love. I prefer to take my time. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, I mean, it, it's, it, um, that would be, uh, I, I would be interested in working in something like that, putting that together. So maybe, maybe we could talk about it. Um, That'd be great. Yeah. You know, cause, cause like, and we, we've done this before and, you know, had a, had a tremendous success, um, you know, um, but of course that brought in a whole incredible amount of, of horrendous attacks and censorship and everything else and that's dealing with the shootings. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's no doubt that these things need to, they, there, there, there needs to be an awareness. And I, I also like, yeah, the, the solution there where it's like you pull yourself off the grid, and, you know, you, you, um, you, you stick to local farmers and all that. Yeah, that's a great, and that that's definitely what my, I aim to do. And I'm sure most people would, would ideally want to do, uh, hopefully can do, but that's still like, we still can't just turn our back on, no. on what's going on. Cause it's going to come to your front door. I mean, yep. just, just like I was showing with the homeschooling, um, they are by hook or by crook. They want everybody in their system. That's the whole thing with the 5g coming in. They, they want to create a, a 110% complete surveillance state. The smart cities too, um, which I've talked a lot about. And, and I don't know if I've done specific videos, but I talk a lot about it in the podcast, like the one in Toronto, um, which is Google, uh, Street Labs. Uh, well, it's a part of Alphabet Incorporated, their parent company. And they want to set up this... this uh, this smart city in, in Toronto in the, uh, along the, the coast there in the Bay area or whatever. And, um, they've been 
hyper secretive about it and they've been withholding all information from the city council and it's all been completely done in a clandestine way it's really nasty what they're doing and it's it's basically the smart grid that they're going to lay out i mean they're going to lay this all out in africa they're going to build cities from from the, the ground up sort of thing because you know most people are, are still living an agrarian type lifestyle there um and they're going to do this here where they're going to come in and it's just like we're incrementally the you know you get the first you've got the smartphone or whatever right that's the first piece of tech people carry around sort of thing then next thing you got the watch and then you know next thing you know you've got the alexa the in your home right you've got your your spying devices next to you in your kitchen table and then you got them in your bedroom they're on all the time um so we're and then then they're building them in the homes and then now they're when they're building schools they're building all this tech embedded in the schools and it's all under the guise of morally safer right mm -hmm. where it's you know we've got to keep the kids safe because of these 90 pound you know scrawny little weaklings are going to show up with guns and shoot them all so um that's just another example but the surveillance grid that is being rolled out you know we we mentioned the drones before and how sophisticated and advanced they are and how they're likely many many steps where i was talking about okay so last year the the news came across and and all the major you know disney media reported on how china had surveillance or they had facial recognition in their airports and it was like oh that's kind of spooky maybe we should think about this well and I called it then. I said it's already in your airports. It well, it already was. It's, yep. it's and now they've come out and admitted it. And they've said, well, it's already and it's all in the major airports, the train stations. It's already in all the stadiums, all the major arenas. So wait, those reports of the uh, facial recognition toilet paper dispensers in the public restrooms in China, does that mean it's coming soon? Absolutely, yeah. All right. is, 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 that, is that a joke or is that real? Yeah, it was being funny, so yeah. Uh, no, that, but it's a real yeah. thing. That's like the I mean, future. like, yeah, pretty soon. That's what Google uh, Smart City is going to be like. It's like having cameras up your rectum, basically. Like it, literally because they're going to know what's in your, your, your poop. Yeah, they have their it's little so, reporters, their yeah, biobots come out and, of you. And, yeah, and it's it's so utterly out of this world what's happening. And the 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 pace that it's all being rolled out is is frightening. Well, because so. they control the words. They control the words, so they control like how we're thinking of it, like healthcare, all this healthcare. My mm -hmm. eye, nothing about that is for your health not mm -hmm. one thing but people i know people that go to great lengths in order to have health insurance like yeah. they will because they gotta have it it's like emergency medical is one thing but none of this other stuff is healthcare. it's not and it's just yeah. word magic they, they just want you to be completely reliant on their system they yeah. want you to feel that you cannot exist without it you should not go to those people to make you well because they're the ones that made you sick in the first place. Yeah, exactly. You go back to your abusers. Yeah. It's it's yeah, but, oh, it's, it's 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 insane what's going on. It's very scary. And it um and yeah. I, I still I'll repeat myself again. I know I said it on Jeff C and Friends, and I wanted to talk to Chris. He sounded so techy. Uh I wanna I want to educate people in a different way. No, I want to reward them for it. I think the more you learn, the more you should earn. And it would be great because then people could actually learn the stuff that these people that are manipulating us. We don't know the stories. We're we're lacking. It was pulled out of our, our education however long ago. And so these simple things just pass us by. The ways that we're able to be manipulated because we don't know the historical manipulations. Yeah. And it could also help make people into be more moral sort of people, you know, like we don't care maybe, or people don't care what happens to the animals because they probably don't even care what happens to themselves or a person down the street. They don't, they don't have well, the care. One of the things they do too is, is like, that's why I mentioned the dogs and the cats and all that, the animal videos and the prevalence of them and, you know, have dogs, not kids and you yeah. know, why it's so much better. Is they the it and this is a well known okay, so like 
I'm sure anybody that would want to research this could research it and say that um, if dog food corporations have been paying millions and tens of millions of dollars every year to Hollywood so that they always have dogs and cats prevalent in, in movies as as like major characters or as tagalogs. I could see it. All right. Well, that is well known. So yeah. like that's a fact. I'm not making that up. Um, but that all fits into, you know, how they program us because in many ways they've conditioned people to care way more. Like it's like caring about the, the, um, the, uh, illegal aliens that are smuggling themselves in your country. Like these are criminals, right? And, you know, really you should be in favor of having your borders protected and and you know your your laws enforced because that puts you at risk it puts other people at risk and all these things but they have conditioned people through all the movies and television in order to sympathize with these people and to think that that's where their sympathy should lie i want to know what it is in their their homes like is there a sign up come here we'll offer you this like i don't what causes these migrant trains or caravans and all of this well, stuff. Yeah. But if, if you're going to definitely, if you're going to care about them, you should care about your neighbors. Well, that's, that's the whole thing, right? And it, I, it, you know, I do, I love all these people, even these bastards. I do. I do. I don't hate them, no, but I, I don't either. I, I think there's something wrong with them, <laughs> but, and I would like to help them. But. Yeah, yeah, it, but it's not about that. It's no. it's like, it, no. look, you know, you should be much more conservative, completely focused on your own communities. Yeah, without a doubt, you you know, some something happens on your side of the world, it should have no impact on you whatsoever, none, zilch, zero. But oh, yeah. it does because it's a, a global global system. That's what it is, and and therefore it's just so like that shooting that happened in New Zealand. It might as well have happened in Toronto. It might as well have happened in in you know Chicago or whatever. It, it doesn't really matter because it's the same. It's, I it's, meant to send you. I don't think I did. I did send it to our friend in New Zealand though. Mm -hmm. But there was this video from maybe it was the eighties, and it was interviewing people on the street in the United States, and they were asking them about New Zealand, and they're like, "New what?" <laughs> like <laughs> they didn't even know what it was. <laughs> anyway, I thought that That's was funny. Great. Nobody That's in the way it should be though, yeah. really. I mean, good for them. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, maybe you it didn't have funny. the best education or whatever, but you know what? I mean, it's better to know what's happening in your own community than what's happening. And this is what we should. This is how they programmed us. All of their agendas appear everywhere. They all converge. They're all tied together. The rainbow is all tied to this. Just the migrant agenda. Right. The the all these things, the global warming's all tied to it because and just like I showed um in an um a video I did, you know, maybe a few weeks ago where it was um climate refugees. <laughs> and it was yeah. like oh, now the world has to brace because hey. the future the future will feature tens of millions or hundreds of millions of climate refugees. And you know, you know, it does kind of fit in with the uh agenda twenty one if there is warming in places like Alaska. If it mm. was, those people would have to leave. Like if their subsistence lifestyle is over, they would have to relocate. In fact, I've seen videos where they're saying, you know, our biggest fear is that they're going to make us go because of the whatevers and they won't let us back. So that moves those people in from the coast too. Well, Even that's, if it's that's, a yeah, manipulated that's, reason. That, that is a happening. huge uh, objective. Like what you've seen with the, um, like even here in Montreal, the flooding, right? So like there's um, parts of Montreal that have flooded over the uh, past few years and insurance companies now are like, well, we're not going to, uh, you know, we're not going to cover homes that are in those areas. Um, you have these storms that we know that they can steer and, and manipulate and, that, yeah, you know, and fires and all these things that happen. Um, 
and I talked about this when the uh, Fort McMurray fires were happening. So it's very convenient how Fort McMurray has been the sort of epitome uh, throughout the world used as as like Mordor, the example of horrible greenhouse gases that are, you know, whenever any sort of propaganda talks about global warming, they always show Fort McMurray. Um, and here's Fort McMurray burning to the ground kind of thing and all the citizens being uh, forcibly evacuated, even though 95% of the homes weren't touched. Um, and then you had the the uh, Geostorm guy there, Jared Butler, you know, taking selfies of his allegedly burned out home in the hills of, of, of California where the wildfires were, wildfires, right, were, were sparking up here, there, and everywhere. Um my theory, I've said this for years, ever since I've been on, um, is that a lot of this stuff is orchestrated in order to achieve their objectives and their objectives, which are clearly outlined in Agenda 21, uh, including the maps, which talk about moving everyone away from coastal areas, moving everyone away from mountains and forest and moving them all into mega cities. And then what do you have over the past decade? Well, here in Montreal, you have the mega city. Toronto at the exact same time became a mega city. So you have all these municipalities that are converging together and forming these, these um, one government, like one sort of, you know, municipal, massive municipal sort of bureaucracy. Regionalism, they call it in my yeah. area. Yeah, so all of this is, is, is folding out like they planned. In fact, people asked me about this because I know I was asked recently about Agenda 21 because they said Agenda 21 was supposed to be achieved by 2050. Um, or no, they said somebody was confused about Agenda 21. They were asking me about Agenda 21 because they said now that they called it Agenda 2030, that means they um, they pushed it back at 10 years or nine years or something like that. I said, no, no, the no. 21 was not for the year 21. In fact, agenda 21 was, was scheduled to be completed by 2050, but agenda 2030 came out because they're so far ahead. <laughs> they've been so successful that they figured that their objectives. So agenda 2030 is agenda 21. It's the same. It's the exact same, uh, basic objectives, which is a complete takeover of all of humanity. It's, it's, it's every level, uh, food, education, water, you know, uh, infrastructure, um, you know, medicine, you know, healthcare system, everything, all of these things incorporated into a globalized system. Um, yeah. and, and food production, most importantly, I mean, this is where, you know, food credits and things like this. So the, the phasing out this, this sort of, um, socialist system that's taken over, making everybody dependent on on governments, which is all part of their plans, um, has all been orchestrated over the years. Oh uh, yeah, and if you're if you are living in a land of social credits and you make somebody mad, you don't get your bio goop. You know they could mm. shut your countertop machine down. That's it. If, your smart yeah, meter, right? Um, yeah. The, yeah, which is able to, and then you have your smart fridge and your smart well toilet. Have those. I have a smart meter. I had no say. I came home one day from work. There it was. Yeah, I had. <laughs> it's like I didn't ask for this. Like, oh, it's a present from the water ones here, here too. You go. Here's your smart meter. The um, smart and, water. I, and I look at it, it always has zeros across. It's like, what is going on? It's not telling me anything. <laughs> Don't stand there and look at it too much. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it's certainly not uh, zeros on my my uh, uh, hydro bill. No, um, and you know, what's interesting with the smart meters too is I was on that, uh, the one Silicon Valley channel that I watched. They, mm. they're talking about how every single electronic device you have has its own signature. Yeah. So they know exactly every little thing, how much you run it, what it is. Yep, yep, yeah, and exactly. It, exactly. And it, it's just, that's like. And then they can employ the AI. So the AI. Oh, yeah. Uh, to, to give. So like, like they can literally know way more about you than you could possibly know about yourself. Absolutely. And, and then you couple that or you add in the DNA of course, yeah. with it, which is diabolical, yeah. right? It's like they actually have you now. Yep. They can actually recreate you. They can, yep. they can clone you. They can, you know, they can, they can design designer flus and whatever else to eradicate you if they need to yep. take you out of the gene pool. I mean, it, it's so insane what has happened. Um, 
and we've witnessed it and we have tried so hard to reach people and what is the result well we're shuffled and you know uh censored and you know stuffed in the back corner of of the internet sort of thing in the dark corner and they, they they stick us with all the flat earth and all the uh, other operations that they got going to make uh, anybody that questions what's going on look crazy I tell you, I'm almost out of my box of 500 business cards. It's oh, dwindling. Wow. <laughs> so that That's was the awesome. best, man. $10. I got this load of cards and it's such an easy way. And I mean, I, I don't even know how many views I have to say that all those people have come there, but it gets you talking to people. Everybody that I give one to, I've given them a little spiel. In order yeah, to well, you got a, you got a, you got that gift. So you know that's. Um, I talk a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I you're a I, That's the joke. Is that I'm not supposed to go anywhere. No talking. No, no talking. Because I, I do. That. I got that. Um, the family thing. All right, yeah. Jeff. But, uh, don't talk about this, that, or that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll <laughs> like, be right okay. back from the store. <laughs> I'll, just, uh, I'll yeah. just sit here like an idiot stab my brain with a fork oh boy but that's yeah i mean that's that's the problem is uh you, you know a little bit too much um people... i've had a bit too much to think yeah yeah <laughs> yeah anyway so yeah this are uh, this one of the articles that I, I i it's just from a few days ago july the 11th here yep, and... they're sold out i'm sorry you can't buy it's that dna total total similar bullshit. like yeah. yeah like people are lining up to get this shit yeah it's online only I think it was like four days they sold Such out. bullshit. Oh. Such utter bullshit. And they I make it look just like ice cream. Yeah. And they'll probably give you give it away at a good price and uh, people will buy it because people are dumb. They've got all kinds of flavors. Yeah. And they, they put things like this, like vanilla blackberry toffee. Yeah. Yep. That one's a, the longest ingredient list. Yeah. <laughs> So the search for sustainable, of course, the number one word of Agenda 21, the search of sustainable, healthy alternatives to meat has two paths, the meat mimicking veggie burger and the lab-grown proteins. But in the land of dairy, there are only plant-based alternatives such as cashew butter or, and almond milk. Whether you're milking the animals or slaughtering them, industrial cattle husbandry is bad for the planet. <laughs> Because they that. said so. Yeah, it's just because you said so. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what? None it of us would be, be here without that. Yeah. Like the only reason that we're here is because we developed the ability to do that. Where's that mallet, Jeff? What's it? There it is. Okay. Oh, I'm feeling better. Good. I put on CNN. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just crazy but th this is how your mind control works your mind control tells you how to think i mean if you had critical thought you'd be just like look at the bias in this article this is ludicrous i mean this is this, this is not somebody that's saying you know something on a uh you know a, an objective sort of viewpoint this is totally totally biased and totally yeah. there to push the agenda basically telling you hey we can't have this anymore. we can't have yeah milk and you know you can't eat milk and, and and steaks it's you can't do that anymore it's terrible you're you're killing the planet you're yeah killing the planet. and the same companies that made it this bad are all the ones that are going to rake it in when because mm. now they've made us go green everything for the new world yeah yeah exactly. same companies so uh, studies show show it to be the key culprit in <laughs> of course, of course, mm -hmm. CC climate crisis and a source of localized environmental damage. The it is, you know, yeah. it is Envi <laughs> localized environmental damage. Those feedlots are disgusting, but they're just yeah. doing it wrong. So, but we already covered that. But yeah. The refrigerator aisle has been full of plant-based dairy for some time, but now there are a few startups like the purveyors of cultured meat want to take dairy one step further. Already under siege by fa falling milk sales, big dairy lobbyists have been lashing out at the makers of plant-based rivals as those competitors' markets share grows. Uh, but their next challenge, next challenger, um, maybe coming from the laboratory in the form of synthetic we and investors are ready are already lining up 
and that big dairy lobbyist thing there, how they're fighting against and the labeling of it all. I know I told you this before that it's the, the whole, they're playing both sides. They're writing their legislation. They're writing out the rules because they, it's not allowed yet. You know, it's not, I mean, how could they just throw this stuff in the market without making the parameters just like yeah. the, the clones that was out there before they, they set those little rules and made it all okay. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So these are just more examples of how it's not just your meats. It's not just your fish. It's everything. It's going to be everything. It They're already say, is. They say they brew. They're working on the brewing up the oils and everything. And I don't know. I don't know if they're doing the pieces and parts, and then they mix it all together. How do they make palm oil? How do they just turn? It? Do they make that out of one little organism that? makes the finished product or do they mm -hmm. have to add in some slime and the bits and pieces to make it? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. Okay. So we, what do we got here? So pay well. um, yeah, they I don't know. They don't want me to take off my ad block or whatever. What is this going on here? Okay. I'll just get rid of this one. There's more to this story. Aww. Ah, yeah, gay, oh. couple, gay couple create diamond wedding ring from Burger King Whopper. What? <laughs> I don't know. That's what? what? <laughs> that oh. is just disgusting. Uh, Wait. Create yeah. diamond wedding ring from Burger King Whopper. How? Mm. How? A new advert shows how gay couple turned a Burger King Whopper into a diamond. I guess they shoved that up their cake hole. Oh, it's a <laughs> synthetic diamond. Yeah. Oh, oh. They create a wedding ring. They grilled it until it oh, was I mean, ash. It's, it's, ash. It's their, yeah. I, I suppose their coupling is about as, as organic and as wholesome as a uh, Whopper. Oh. Um, Dima and Alvar are a couple. <laughs> are a couple. Dima and Alvar are a, a couple. Are a. <laughs> Our, the AI um, wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> the AI wouldn't be this dumb. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they got to make it dumb. From the unnamed. It's it's pink news, right? Uh, it's like. Yeah. Lydia, come on. Get it together. Yeah. <laughs> the Scarlett Johansson said she should be allowed to play any peer, any person after quitting trans role. Why only people? Yeah. She no, that's play a no cat. she said I should be able to play animals and all that thing. Oh, yeah. okay, good. Then you got Megan Rapino here with her purple hair. She's on lots of things, I see. Yeah. Oh, they fucking hell. Anyways. So Dima and Alvar are a couple are from <laughs> an unnamed country in Eastern Europe. An uh, unnamed country. But this they're is, real. Like, they're like, real. Yeah, it sounds real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds like the midget lesbian marriage did you, you ever see that one the muslim midget lesbian marriage i don't think I so muslim midget marriage <laughs> it was the stupidest story ever mm -hmm. uh yeah it was just ludicrous um i don't know why it's not turning up maybe i have to use google or something to find it but i did a video on it and and i got i got like a community guideline strike for bullying. I basically read the article with a computer voice or you voice. bully. Yeah. Oh, you I do think I remember that video. It's insane. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's a little lesbian, a Muslim lesbian midget. Well, it was a, it was a, a normal, apparently normal uh, Muslim lady who married a midget who is in a wheelchair or something because love is love. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, it's, I was just like, yeah, it's, it's total make-believe, the whole thing. And it was done at a, like, I don't know if it was Starbucks or something. I think it was a, it was like a Starbucks and it had a gay preacher. It, uh, it was just the most ludicrous thing ever. But it's it's just like the the mother that mom, mom, son, son does dishes while mom watches 70 hours of porn a week. Did you see? Yeah, I remember that <laughs> I mean, they're so <laughs> ludicrously stupid. I mean, they're just, but people, I guess, read these things. But here you go. This is one of these unnamed country in Eastern. It's like what the CBC does when the CBC features, uh, say, like a, a, um, a gay Muslim refugee. And they'll be like, they'll have his face or the person's body and face blurred out. And then even the, 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 um, the voice is blurted out. 
and they'll have captions and the captions will say, I left my undisclosed country <laughs> because I wouldn't be accepted. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, it might as well be rainbow unicorn land, you know, with floating islands and fucking, you know, fairies. I mean, it, it, people are dumb. You're going to, if you're going to see a story like this and you're going to think it's authentic, I feel sorry for you. I really yeah. do. I mean, maybe it is, but seriously, I mean, it's just stupid. It's 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 retarded. But I digress. <laughs> According to the men, they are unable to hold hands in public there without facing discrimination. Don't be gay. Uh, paid for by Burger King. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> wow. Was this before or after they turned the Whopper into the oh, diamond? Yeah, I believe it now. Yeah. Bur Burger King just said they woke up one day and they just said, you know what? Let's just pay for these people this, from this unnamed country. We'll fly them in. And then they can make a diamond ring from their Whopper. Why wasn't it an impossible Whopper? <laughs> It's an impossible story. Uh, Paid for by Burger King, the, pu the couple were then flown to Germany to get married. For being part of the campaign, they were given a diamond, a, a diamond for a ring. A campaign created by grilling a burger until it was ash, and then transforming the carbon into a synthetic diamond. The campaign. Hmm. What? What was the Burger King campaign? Did they have a? Yeah, what was they... the campaign? What was the campaign? <laughs> That's a good question. For being part of the campaign. Oh it's my. just out of this world. Celebs you didn't know have an LGBT sibling. <gasps> <laughs> Stars you didn't know were gay or lesbian. Stars who went gay for pay. Oh. 17 people who share what makes them proud. To be non oh by the way it's non-binary day actually now it's twelve twenty five so it's another LGBT PQ and it's WXYZ day but I said it here on my uh, Twitter here I'm just go to my profile and where is it yeah here so it was trending today <laughs> International Non-Binary Day <laughs> uh. now they're trying to get rid of Mother's Day folks. Yeah. Remember that. Just remember that. Wouldn't um, want anybody to be uncomfortable. It's unbelievable what's going on. Yes, I'm with you. Let's stop the ride. Can yeah. we, you know, like maybe, I don't know, Mars? <laughs> they get on the first flight, kill off, kill off the uh, the shills that are there. <laughs> uh, it'll be robots yeah, or something it, on there. Yeah, that's it. Would the, you eat the genetically synth. modified salmon? The FDA has approved... And Indiana companies genetically altered salmon. Of course they have. It may be available in restaurants next year, but you may be unaware it's being served. Ow! You can Well, if they're feeding synthetic biology to just regular farmed salmon, aren't they genetically altered? Hmm. Well, that's it. I mean, that is bad enough. But these are like these are fish. the actual, I mean, the, yeah. the difference between a genetically modified salmon and a real salmon is astronomical. Have you seen yeah. that? Like what, what they look like compared to each other? Yeah. They're bigger, it's like right? three times the size, the genetically yeah. modified one. And they look like freaks. Like they don't look anything like a, you know, kokanee salmon, salmon or something like that. Right. The ones they've that they've got make. extra fillets in them. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. More. Uh, see, see, you see how these. These these people work. You see how they work? They want to give you more. They don't want to you see the whole solution would just people eat less meat, make meat more expensive. Make that if it's more expensive, then the cows and the and the you know all the different the chickens, everything else, the pigs will have better lives because it, it will cost people more money for than they could put that money in. And you know, of course, what's the point of 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 offering real solutions? That's not what this is about. This it all is, has to stop. Yeah, they just, they, they, they want to give us more. They want to give us as much. I mean, they, they, they got to make the salmon three times the size so they can give you three times the, the filet size. Or so better. When, when you're having your McMeal, right? Yep. And there you go. This is exactly, it's already in Canada, so it's already happening here. Um, and it has been for years. And now the United States has approved it. 
So it grows a much faster rate, requires, they claim, 25% less feed. I don't like that, <laughs> like how that works. Is produced inland to protect native, <laughs> protect native fish population. Why do they need protection? Oh, because you're making monsters. I that, hope there's uh, no flooding in Indiana. Uh, uh. It's just, I it, it mean, it's it's out of this world what's going on, folks. This is this is begging for like we talk about ecological disasters of of invasive species which is always human basically right you know whether like australia is a great example <laughs> where they, you know they 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 had the what was it the rabbits that they you know all of a sudden rabbit the, the rabbits were not part of the in the population of well the wildlife of australia continental australia so they brought in the dingoes to hunt the rabbits but the dingoes didn't hunt the rabbits <laughs> Wasn't there something with frogs too? Yeah, the, the cane toads, right? Yeah, so yeah, they're trying to get rid of those. So, like, they keep bringing in all these different species to try to get rid of another invasive species, and it just creates a whole another mess. The she swallowed the spider to catch the fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so, yeah. um, so that's bad enough, but this is this is way worse, way worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is because you're gonna have mutant. You know, synthetic and potentially cloned and whatever else, and you know, transhumanist fish. Who knows in the future how this stuff will unfold? But well, you'll they have say the... the fish is easier to culture to make the lab grown. They say it's easier than beef. Is is it's easier because yeah, no, that's sad. That is Yum. crazy. I love that it's going to be offered in cafeterias and restaurants. Mm. The push for these. <laughs> plant-based foods to be in the old folks homes and the prisons and the cafeterias, the schools. It's because it's the better, it's a good option. You gotta have well, that option. It. Well, and, and if you put it in old folks homes, most of them are, are watching if they're, you know, they're unfortunately probably watching the Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. You know, and, and, and God bless them, but they, they probably have very little clue about what's, I mean, that's it. That's the whole thing. We were doing this podcast uh, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people have no clue this is going on. But these people that are listening, they're gonna yeah. go tell people. That's the key. We're yeah. finding some seeds. We're counting on you all. We are. As if you just told ten people, right? Isn't that one of those things? Yeah. They told anyway. And I told two friends, and they told two friends, and so on, and so it on. It could work. It That's could. the way it's, it's gotta work. work. I mean, we have no other option. We're never gonna be on twending. We're, no. we're never going to, uh, you know. You'd yeah, have no to get in a people. big bathtub full of lab-grown salmon or lab-modified salmon. And then they would they would put you on there. Yeah, see how they say here the salmon is already legally for sale in Canada. Said Michel Henry, or Henry, a Toronto-based food writer, described the genetically modified fish as buttery, buttery, light, juicy. I want to punch this guy in the face. <laughs> Yep. I don't know if, if it tastes right, good, they don't think you'll care. Yeah, just yeah. as Atlantic Savage should be. Mm. Except it's not. Fucking asshole. Um, the product is called Aqua Advantage. <laughs> it's, it's Advantage. Aqua Advantage. <sighs> is genetically modified salmon safe? Maybe you should have put that at the title. Consumers who want to eat genetically modified engineered salmon when it's available shouldn't be concerned, says Gregory Jaffe. Not sure what that name is. I knew a guy that did uh, illustration for Mad Magazine whose name was Jaffe. He was Jewish. I'm not sure, though. Biotech Project Director at the Center of Science in Public Interest told headline or health line. You know, people make the argument to me and in comments, I've seen that uh, all of the food, because like I said before, the Industrial Revolution changed all the food. Everything we eat isn't even what it should be. The plants that we eat, you know, these are just the select few and they've been tweaked and, and tinkered with to get them to be those really big, sweet, juicy, juicy apples and everything. That nothing is what it once was. And they're just going to hell with the joke now. They're like, eh, it's not even, oh, it's all biotechnology. It's been messed with for so long. We've been improving for so long. So what's a little bit more? You know, why would yeah. that be a problem? Yeah, that's, and, and it's just like um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, 
and he's talking about genetically modified foods and he goes you know are you kidding me look at your apples do you know yeah. what an apple used to look like back in the 1970s you know yeah. You know, like so that's they, where they're getting that argument from. Yeah, they, they <laughs> okay. sell it. They sell it like you know, all oh, progress, science, science. Well, I mean, what what is the slogan there? Yeah, where, where was that page? Love is love. Science is real. <laughs> Have you seen this stuff? <laughs> love. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I mean, you see this everywhere. I wonder who's behind this. I wonder. Probably the people you're not allowed to talk about. Uh, Black Lives Matter. Women's rights are human. Geez, I didn't know that. Uh, are you? Are you guys? Are you Camille? You're not going to tell me that women are human beings, are you? What? Come on. Yeah. What? Serious. Women's rights are human rights. <laughs> no human is illegal. Uh, yeah, I beg to differ. Science is real. News isn't fake. What? <laughs> you can't grab anyone there. Well, I gotta love, say on love. the on the illegal thing, wow. I do have to say the lines on a map. You know, this is their sicko society that makes like the. And I, I'm not saying like I don't want I don't want everybody under the sun to come here to my town where we have thirty percent. Is the immigrant population or refugee population? But I don't think these people want to leave their homes. What's making them leave their homes? You know, that's people want to save them. Why are they leaving? What is happening there that isn't just the climate, the climate thing? That's I know they call it the Clarity brain plant. drain. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, the Clergy plant. Seriously, so, uh, I mean, Mumby well, calls it the brain I drain. Live in the United Nations, um, I have no problem. I, I, I love all people. I mean. You know, I love all people. I hate people at the same time. I mean, if you're going to be an asshole, I'm not going to like you. But um, I interact every single day with, you know, Arabs and Africans and, you know, people, mostly brown and black people. And I have absolutely almost no negative things get along superbly with. I mean, I, I, I if I would say anything, as a like white people are uh <laughs> not as, as easy to get along with um so i have nothing against any of these people at all whatsoever none you know but yeah they don't really belong here and why are they all coming over well you know globalism the new world order and and uh depopulation it, it seems like it's the opposite of depopulation but guess what the um the birth rates in the united states and canada yeah, I was just going to say the replacement migration. Catastrophic. Yeah. Catastrophic. In in yep. other words, if there were no migrants coming over, the Canadian and American economies would be in an absolute chaos. They would be in a complete freefall because there is absolutely, it would be an inverted pyramid, which is a nightmare of any country. So this is the reality, folks. They're conditioning humans not to have babies and women to work in glass towers and be men and men to be women and you know kids to be queers que queer kid stuff and uh, and they're masking it all by bringing in over huge hordes of migrants and then they're making you sympathize with the migrants so that you buy into their i mean it's it's all it's and then it's, they'll stick us all in our cubicles and we, it won't even matter for the jobs thing yeah, Actually. exactly. They don't care so, what you do. They just want to give you. They'll give you credits. Yeah, so you can get your uh, synthetic salmon. Oh, and your rental clothes. In in your, in your what was that ice cream there? That um, <laughs> perfect, perfect day. Perfect day. Perfect I day. had a perfect day. Yep. I had a perfect day. Here's my um blackberry uh, vanilla uh, toffee. 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 Yep. <laughs> Except mm -hmm. those aren't blackberries. And uh, I, I love no their, vanilla there. Their chocolate is milky chocolate. Yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. It's it's out of this world what's going on. And it's <sighs> it's everywhere. This this is why I, I thought of this slogan here, this t shirt that you see everywhere. You'll see it everywhere. Um which is exactly the, all the agendas coming together. Um 
all the things that you can't they... grab anyone there. I didn't even notice that part. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but... you can't grab anyone there. Really? Yeah, you can't. But love is love. Love is love. So what? That's a little. Ah. Yeah, they're, they're not, but that's that's the way it is. It's huh. uh, up is down, inside it is out, black is white, and um, stop yeah. the ride. Stop the ride. It's, uh... it's and and. Look, I mean, yeah, the solution is to break free of their mind control. The solution is to take control of your food production, to do the things they don't want you to do and, and get off their system. Um, Talk you know. to your neighbors. Don't be afraid of them. Yeah, them. that's a really good – that I wholeheartedly agree. Talk to your, I talk to my neighbors about this stuff all the time. My neighbors say things like, I can't understand why everybody's getting cancer. That's why I say, well, it's the foods. <laughs> yeah. You know, what do you think? And they're like, uh, well, you mean the genetically mod? Yeah, that's what exactly. So, you know, you, you talk to people about these things. And then, you you know, um, that's the only way that we're going to be able to go in the future. We have to look at the trajectory of the censorship and understand that, you know, it's a losing game on their platforms. Yep. That we're, we're just going to be shoved off. Um, but at least we can reach the tiny group of people we can. Mm. And then they'll go. Yeah, that's that's why you use the window while you've got it here. Here's yep. an article off Insider, What Nutrition Experts Think About Kids' Meals from 10 Fast Food Chains. What do you think, Camille? <laughs> <sighs> Gosh. Uh, I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee you they're going to say, well, it's not so bad. Uh Fast food is a convenient option when you're on the go. It's a convenient option. Kids' meals have expanded to include healthier options. Yeah, my my nephew apparently was. They were at a restaurant. They're down not in my state. They were at a restaurant, and all the kids' club menus uh, items were impossible varieties. Like it was meat meatloaf and meatballs and burgers and everything, but it was all impossible. And yeah. I was so happy because even though my sister does not do as i do she said nope <laughs> she, <laughs> she said nope you are not getting that that is fake food Good so oh so happy but yeah there it was all kids meal yeah. kids meals yep so this is an example of an article here off the insider <laughs> i love that where they're basically saying you know what it's pretty good for a quick uh quick kid friendly meal on the go fast food is undoubtedly convenient I would say it's undoubtedly abhorrent without hesitation. Yeah. Didn't, I would say never. That's what I would say. Didn't McDonald's add apples to their kids' meals like the same yeah, yeah. apples topped the Apple dirty dozen list or with, something? With caramel. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's oh. Apple slices with caramel dip. Uh, but yeah. weren't apples like the top of the list that year? I feel like I remember somebody saying the top of the list of the dirty dozen what not to eat if it's not mm -hmm. organic. And McDonald's is like, here, kids. Yeah, exactly. Here, here's here's it's your healthy. modified apple with your synthetic, you know, caramel goo with all the chemicals in it and the <sighs> sugars and everything else and the, the high fructose corn sugar, which is, I mean, look at these kids here. They're They're drinking shakes. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's it, it's it's hilarious that an article would come out like this that would basically say, you know what? Pretty good choice for your kids. And you know what? Kudos to the fast food giants that are putting apple slices in their kids meals. <laughs> and yeah, like trying to make that's like just ridiculous, folks. I mean, that is just ludicrous. Right. I mean, it's like it, the and one thing that people need to know i've talked about this for years i mean ever since i started I, i've been slamming mcdonald's and the fast food industry is that mcdonald's burger thing and all these fast food corporations their strategy has always been to addict kids at the earliest age possible uh, as toddlers and that's the whole thing about the mcdonald land parks and all that they yeah. those things are very expensive and they build those things so that you'll bring your kids to the McDonald's parties, all these things. McDonald's, I want a Happy Meal. <laughs> when, when I was a kid, McDonald's would offer uh, free uh, jugs of orange juice, or it was, it was orange. It's just disgusting orange drink that they would make. So they they give you a big McDonald's thermos oh. for your soccer games, and then uh. and they would give you free McDonald's parties. I mean, you have to pay for the food, but. They give you. Uh, they would 
have a, a, a party room and shit like that for kids. And so parents just, they don't know, right? They just be like, wow, you know, want a kids to have a good time. It's cheap. Two birds, one stone. They can play, they can eat. Can yeah, eat. yeah. And McDonald's yeah. and all these things, like McDonald's sets up community, uh, you know, uh, community. Um, uh, Ronald McDonald House, I know. Mon here. Ronald McDonald Houses and community centers and all these things. Like I showed years back how in the black neighborhoods, like this is where they really target, you know, just like the Planned Parenthood, go figure. In the black neighborhoods, the McDonald's becomes this cultural icon and they set up all these community events and they have local celebrities come in and, and then they give out McDonald's food and they, you know, and it's like every, nobody understands, like none of these people understand what's going on. They don't understand that they're being manipulated. Um, I had an article here. Yeah. McDonald's restaurants are McDonald's real community centers. Uh. And then they have elderly people here who are coming together and you know like look people just come together right people like company so elderly people are just gonna go where other people are but they're not gonna understand what what mcdonald's is and what these fast food corporations are up to they're just they're just looking for companionship the reality is should be in a park you know have it or you know an, a healthy sort of mom and pop restaurant or something like that and they should be as far away from this crap as possible. But this is the type of, of articles that they put out on a daily basis that um, reinforce this type of embracement of our culture. And all these things, everything ties together. So when McDonald's, you know, promotes the movies, the mind control, the Disney, right? And then they're bringing in the impossible burgers and the the so-called healthier meals which are total bullshit folks there there's no way these meals are anywhere healthy for your kids it's not just it's they say plant-based i'm saying based on plants well that's they, it right plant-based to, to play into that programming that yeah, you know oh word. it's organic right yep. no it's not organic yep. that's, the, yep. that's the irony it's anything but it's the yep. furthest thing on planet Earth from being organic. It's grown in labs. It's made in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Seriously. The way they get that meaty-like texture. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. So it's processed. And this is why I brought this in here because I, I wanted to reemphasize how it's the children that are being targeted. And, that, and, and it's the children that are the most important because – it's one thing for adults to eat these things because our cells are not forming like the kids are. This well, is why. You in know. some ways. Because yeah, we are rebuilding ways. ourselves. But yeah, the children, they're going to do this their whole lives. And yeah, they're, oh my gosh. Well, their brains are so developing. Bad. Yeah, their brains. They're, they're, uh. they're, all their organs are developing. Their bodies are developing. That's what I mean. It's like, so they're growing. So this is what <laughs> it's out of this world it's, it's so just, diabolical who could do this well they don't care about they us they don't care about us <laughs> yeah. they don't care that's why they normalize obesity because it's they don't care about us they don't they don't get here they'll give you a cancer ribbon right and, uh, they, they, and that whole thing is programming you into accepting your fate because yep all the foods are are laced with all these carcinogens carcinogens carcinogen <laughs> it's <right>? late <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's late it is late actually <laughs> it's probably time to maybe close up what do you say it's pretty late well i'm going to try to make it to jeff c and friends i don't know if i'll be in the area but i'll try to come and chat again soon and maybe we'll do this again awesome oh yeah for sure uh, i really enjoyed it um and i didn't even notice that how late it was <laughs> but uh Again, uh, Camille, I uh, put your, your channel in the description. I know. Um, stop uh, the ride. But it's please stop the ride, Jeff. <laughs> Gotta be polite. I'll fix that. But maybe um, if you can, you can leave a comment right now in the chat so the people that are watching can go and sub your channel. I highly okay. recommend it, folks, because um, she's doing tremendous work. Incredible videos. Thank you. And, please uh, watch them. Share them. Put them on your own channels. Tell yeah. people there's transcripts. There's all the sources. I made it easy, people. Please, 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 please. Anyways, um, thanks so much, Camille, thank uh, for you, coming Jeff. on the show. And uh, thank you to everyone that uh, watched the show. 
Uh, hope you uh, got something out of it, and hopefully you can help spread this message. We all have to do this together. We cannot be an island in this uh, globalist sort of assault on everything that we um, are and what we are consuming. So we all have to be vigilant. We all have to take part and help uh, push as much of this information around as possible to hopefully protect and shield people from what is happening um, because it, it's clear. I mean, it's clear what's going on. It's, it, it's, there's no denying it. You can't come in here and deny it. We, we, this channel doesn't really, you know, like when it, they talk about conspiracies, right? Yeah. It's almost like we're anti-conspiracy. Seriously. Seriously. We're not, we're not showing you conspiracy. I mean, we are showing conspiracies in the sense of a strict definition of what a conspiracy is, which is people working in secret together to plot something out. But the way that they define conspiracies is something crazy that, you know, crazy people who have too much time on their hands come up with and proliferate in order to get popular and make money and whatever else. No, we're dealing with reality and we're showing you exactly what they are doing. We're, we're And we're only scratching the surface because we have no idea uh, how far it goes. Like we're, we can only show you what we can see and what we know. Uh, you know, so this is... This is reality, unfortunately. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyways, with that being said, um, again, you can always come and support me. It means a lot to me. My Patreon link is in the description. Please go and sub Camille. Check her channel out. She's doing incredible work. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll announce uh, when Jesse and friends probably come on up this week, maybe on Friday, uh, later, maybe after 9 o'clock on Friday. I'll see if I can get that time available and hopefully and i really look forward to hosting that i'm really pumped so that being said i Thank wish you, you all a great night good night thanks right. chef thank you camille um <laughs>